We've circled this day on the calendar since August. The Saints have won three of their last four to set up this meeting with the rivals from St. Xavier. It's the 18th meeting all time between the Saints and Cougars, but not many games as big as today. With both teams unbeaten in the conference, the winner holds their playoff destiny in their hands. The loser plays for pride. If you're not excited about this one, you better check your pulse. The Saints and Cougars battle for the conference next on the USF Sports Network. Anderson. Enjoy it. With the steal. Anderson. They're going on to Ruffin. It's in the air. On a dime to Ruffin. Running. 10. 5. Touchdown. Aaron on the other end. Pushes it down just inside the line. Good afternoon, Nick Jacobs, Coach Lee Turnbow here at Joliet Memorial Stadium ahead of a game that we've all been looking forward to for a long time. Now, the point of today is the Saints had to take care of business before this game to make this game important, and they did that. The Saints are 2-0 going into the uh, into this game. They're 2-0 along with St. Xavier, so the Cougars are undefeated. The Saints are undefeated. That makes this game a very important one, Coach. It does. Everybody's game face is on tonight. Everybody knows what this stake today in terms of playoffs, conference seating. I'm looking forward to this one. 43-31 uh, last week against Olivet Nazarene, a game in which, again, the Saints took the ball away three more times. The defense has been playing pretty good. Defense has been playing great. This time of year, turnover is a big key. Saints haven't turned the ball over the last two games. The offense has been pretty efficient as well. Let's welcome in head coach Joe Curry. And, Coach, we just talked about uh, your defense, plus nine the last three games, taking that ball away, that the offense has been efficient. It's got to be pretty good for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's what we work on. You know, I've told you guys that, you know, we have our turnover circuits of that. And for us, there's two things that win and lose football games, and that's touchdowns and turnovers. we got to put the ball in the end zone, not turn it over on offense, and take it away on defense. If we do those things, we're not going to lose many games. Yep. I'm taking a look at defensively, especially this time of year, going into the end of the conference, going into cold weather, red zone defensive efficiency, about 80% of the opponents are scoring. What have we done to improve that here in the last couple of weeks? Uh, just trying to trying to overemphasize assignments and, and making sure that, you know, it's just very simple down there. You know, something as small as giving up your leverage or something like that can cost you a touchdown. And you just try to keep emphasizing those things with your guys and, and the big gap sound down there. You know, you can't have somebody say, well, I thought I saw this. You know, you got to you gotta do what they say. And, uh, and, and if you do that, we've been generally pretty good down there. Talk about the connection, the rivalry here between St. Francis and St. Xavier. Obviously, Coach Femme on the other side started here at St. Francis. You, you've played against them. I think St. Francis has played St. Xavier every single year since 2000. What's it like when you go up against a team like St. X? Well, I don't know if it's much of a rivalry when we don't win, you know. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, always, it's always fun to compete against, you know, the, some of the best teams in the country. And, you know, our goal every week is to go 1-0, and and that's, that's the same this week. And, and, you know, me and Coach Femme do go way back. He was actually my defensive coordinator here in 1998, um, you know, but uh, but it's just fun to compete at those levels with those guys and, and our goal is just to go one and oh. So what is the, the key to, to beating a team like St. Xavier? What's the scouting report look like? Well, you know, offensively, they got some pretty good skill guys, you know, that you just got to keep the ball in front of you and we got to tackle well. I, I think that's a big thing, um, you know, and then offensively, we, we just got to execute and, and put the ball in our playmakers' hands. And, and, and if we can, we've been pretty good at that here over the past couple weeks. And if we continue to do that, you know, I think that it'll be another, you know, game in the fourth quarter that, uh, you know, whoever makes the plays in, in the fourth quarter wins. And last week we were able to do that. And, you know, hopefully Hopefully we can do that again today. Everybody good to go? Everybody healthy? Uh, you know, it's late in the season. No, not everybody's <laughs> healthy. Um, we're going to be without Josh Woodard today. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, I mean, we got guys who have played there before who, who are going to step up. Um, Jarrell Williams is going to actually move to safety. And, you know, we'll have Arthur King and Jamal Stovall play corner. And, and you know, offensively, I think we're pretty good. Um, we're still missing John Peterzak. But, uh, you know, we've had some other guys step up like Jalen Moore and those sort of things over the past couple weeks. So we got plenty enough to get it done. Go get them. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Hasn't been a lot of close games for St. Francis this season. Whether they're winning or they're losing, they haven't played a game within 10 points. You expect this one to be a little different. 
Yeah, but I think it's going to be high scoring. You look at the history of this series, Nick, it's like 42-35. You know, I give them a bunch of points. I give you a bunch of points. So I look for it to be that type of game today. Weather affected at all? No, it's football time. You know what you get into. There, uh, no, I don't want to hear weather one point. <laughs> That's the last we'll talk about the weather. I don't want to get hit by this guy. Big rivalry game. Conference depends on this one. St. Francis, St. Xavier. It's coming up here on the USF Sports TV Network. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Build character for life at championsofcharacter.org. It is a cold, it We've is a this day on the calendar somewhat since damp the day out here in Joliet Memorial rest. Stadium, but I would rather not be anywhere else today. St. Francis and St. Xavier here, both 2-0 in the MSFA, and they uh, they hold their playoff lives in their hands. Whoever can take this game, Coach Turnbow, uh, really is, is in, the, uh, in the hunt for that playoff berth. Well, you've got your destiny in your own hands, and we thought the way that the Saints have been playing, especially the last four weeks, winning three out of four, and the way that St. Xavier ranked number 10 the country comes into this football game, you thought it would come down to this. It has come down to this. And right now, it's what? Execution. Whoever executes their game plan the best wins today. We had the coin flip. St. Francis won. They deferred. They will kick the ball off. We'll see that vaunted St. Xavier offense up here first. They are 6-1, and 2-0 in the MSFA, and they are led by Alex Martinez, their sophomore quarterback out of St. Lawrence High School. Not your typical uh, football powerhouse, but that's what St. Xavier does. They scout the Chicagoland area so well. They find great players on teams that aren't traditionally good, and then they win with those players right here in our own backyard. Yard. It's actually incredible. It, it's incredible. You take a look at the roster coming into today, Nick. They only have three players, three players outside of Illinois and Northwest Indiana. Three. And we pause right now for our national anthem. As you can see from Old Glory waving in the breeze, we have a little bit of a wind today out of the west-northwest at 10 miles an hour, and it is nearly 40 degrees colder than last week. A game time temperature of 39 degrees right now. So I know we talked about it just a few minutes ago after being down on the field for a little bit now. Coach, weather going to be a factor at all? No, and it's just an excuse. And I don't think it's going to be. No, I'm, I'm seriously, uh, if, if you think you're cold, you're cold. Yep. If you think it's rainy, it's rainy. If you think it's hot, it's hot. That's not going to be one factor in here. But I like these teams are so well coached. Coach Feminist does a great job with saying, Zeph, they, they, they've won a national championship. Coach Curry has got these guys playing their best football of the season right now. So that's not even going to be a factor. What's even going to be a little bit of a factor in terms of weather might be the wind because it's kind yep. of swirling a little bit. 
A couple statistical matchup points to make. The scoring offense both at the top of the MSFA. St. Xavier putting up 36 points a game. St. Francis just behind them at 32. The defense is, well, St. Xavier's defense only giving up 21 points a game so far. The defense for St. Francis is going to have to step up. They're typically giving up 36 points a game. Uh, but the turnover margin are where, uh, is where things are interesting. Over the last three games, like we mentioned, plus nine for St. Francis. They are taking the ball away at a very high rate. We are underway here in Joliet. St. Francis and St. Xavier, the angle kickoff, will be returned from the five. Making his way off to the left side is Stribiak. He'll cut it up the middle to about the 20-yard line. That's where he will start. He probably off letting that kickoff go out of bounds. It looked like it was angling there to the sideline. It, it did, and the thing is, field position is going to be key here, especially early. St. Xavier has a big play, explosive type of offense. St. Francis has really struggled a little bit in opening drive in terms of getting gas in the running game. Let's see how they come out. St. Francis, defense, yes. St. Xavier doesn't really rush the ball, so let's see how the yin and yang works. And we'll see how St. Francis does without Josh Woodard patrolling the defensive backfield as well, getting the start back there. Jarrell Williams, a typical corner, but playing safety as he is stepping up right now. First play of the ballgame nice offensively play. is going to be a run, a sweep to the outside, and Alex Zlomi up to the task as they drop him back at the 13-yard line. That's going to be a loss of about seven yards on the play. More of that, please, from number 44. A little zone read, little sweep to the outside. He keeps his outside arm free, takes on the block, and makes the tackle for a negative play. The ninth tackle for a loss. The team leader in that category for Alex Lomi out of Wilmington High School. In the shotgun is Alex Martinez, just a sophomore. Mike Ivlo goes in motion. He'll get it and counter back to the left. Nice He's hit again, and it'll go down for another loss in the backfield. Hitting the man of the play, Roger Thigpen. The linebacker coming in, another sophomore out of Plainfield Central. Linebacker play has been really key here the last two weeks for St. Francis. Him, Malik Thurman had 20 tackles last week. So, I mean, linebackers have done a really, really nice job. You see right here, watch him shoot the gap right there. Defeats the blocker and makes that play. St. Xavier going to spread him out here on third down. And we'll say 22, I believe, 23. Martinez is in the shotgun. Three wide outs right, one left. They're going to run the play. They're run it up the middle to Ivlo, just trying to get some yardage back up to the 15-yard line. Their first positive play goes for about three yards, and it's going to be fourth and long, and they're going to have to punt this one away. A three and out to start the game for the St. Francis defense. And they're going to be punting into a little bit of a win, and how big is that? The opening drive of the game, St. Francis forces the Cougars three and out. And on to punt this one away, Joe Bailey, the senior out of Lamont High School. Two very good punters, two of the top five in the conference, two of the top 20 in the nation. Back deep to return, Lexis Jackson, punt is away. A little help from the wind as that one skies angled right. Makes a bounce right up to Lexis, right in his breadbasket. He'll take it from the 38-yard line up the sideline, and St. Francis's offense will start with great field position right near midfield. And we talk about the... St. Dolphins, you talk about Aaron Ellis, start of the year as the third string quarterback. We had an injury to Don Butkus, the, game, the season starter, uh, and he stepped in and, and has been nothing short of outstanding. Outstanding, over 1,100 yards into four starts. He's played six total games, but over 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. He really has a mastery of this offense right now. He's the best in terms of passer efficiency in the MSFA Midwest. He is in the top four in passer efficiency in the country, and he'll start with five wide from midfield. First possession of the game for St. Francis. The snap back to Ellis. Dropping, looking. Here comes the pressure from St. Xavier. He's going to scramble and pick up about seven on the quarterback keeper as he takes it to about the 43-yard line. Nice little gain by Aaron Ellis. He doesn't like to run it, but when he does, he can make something happen. It's only his 14th carry of the season and usually when you play zone coverage you don't have a spy or a guy keen on the quarterback so he had a nice little opening to the left side got up for a gain of seven rough and wide left this is kind of his wheelhouse here about 40 yards away from the end zone see if they loft it up here on second down and three nope they're going to run it to jordan smith the tailback and the pile pushes forward for a first down for the saints up to the 38 yard line gain of five you almost get the feeling that this could be a physical game. You know, yeah. St. Xavier came out and run the ball three times. That's kind of weird. And all of a sudden, St. Francis. <laughs> it's weird. I, I, I mean, it's true. Run, run the Absolutely. ball to the left side, and all of a sudden, boom, we're going to power it up yeah. for a first down. It is weird, yeah. These two teams like to sling it, and so far they're coming out and running the ball. First down for the Saints. 
inside SXU territory here at the 37 yard line. Ellis takes a snap, I formation offset right. Smith trying to find the fullback, not a lot of room there as he's folded up and taken down. Danny Sirocco, the sophomore out of Plainfield South, the two time reigning MSFA Defensive Player of the Week, gets his 56th tackle of the season, leads the Cougars in that category. Nice job of swarming defense by the Cougars. Come in for a short game. You're going to hear a lot about number nine in the middle of that linebacker core. And here's Jordan Smith. I should say. Yep, Jordan Smith, number 26, leading rusher for the Saints. He's the dot here in the single back. Lexus Jackson jet motion. He'll take the sweep, oh. but St. Xavier saw it coming a mile away. Stepping in and making the stop, Josh Henniger. His seventh tackle for a loss, the sophomore out of Richards. And that's his key. Watch him shoot right there up on top. Defeats <laughs> the block before he can even turn the corner. If he gets even with them, he can turn that corner because yep. Hedegaard did a nice job of reading that, keeping his outside arm free. He makes that play. Scouting report, anybody? A little bit. <laughs> it is third down and 13 now. Back to the 40-yard line here for the Saints. Snap back to Ellis, throwing. He's going to have to step up in the pocket. Fires down the left sideline and not nearly enough underneath it, and it very well could have been intercepted. But batting that down, number 37, Trevon Anderson, a sophomore out of Bolingbrook High School. That time, St. Xavier did a nice job. They go press coverage, which means the cornerbacks are like one yard off the receivers. And look at it. He just underneath that route comes up. Should have been picked, actually. Yep. He's already got two interceptions, does Anderson. One of them was... A pick six, but couldn't quite get his hands around at that time. Fourth down punter on Luke Nelson has been outstanding. And as far as punting goes, you don't get much more. Uh, you don't have much more fun than watching Luke Nelson punt the ball. The reigning special teams player of the week in the conference, and he'll have to wait as he puts this one high end over end with the flag thrown. We're going to get illegal procedure on one of the outside cover guys. He kind of flinched a little bit before the ball was snapped. Not going to make much difference here to Luke with his leg. He is kicking into a, about a 10 mile an hour wind, though. Now, this is going to seem weird to you, but I, I think, and St. Francis is one of the least penalized teams in the country. Yeah. There are going to be few penalties. You know why? Because it's cold out and the officials want to get the game <laughs> I, I'm, I'm totally serious. I believe you. Here's the punt from Luke. High end. It's going to go to the right side. Wind's going to knock it down. It's going to be caught in the end zone. The return is on. Nice stutter move into the outside and uh, still on his feet. And the nice return by Suzuki, the sophomore out of Oak Forest High School. He's their leading receiver as well, number 11. A lot of sophomores. Very young team for St. Xavier. They're still ranked 10th in the country. You know, you kind of laughed when I told you that, but because mm -hmm. of all the sabermetrics, they actually do studies on it. You know, like the World Series, I'm watching the World Series, really? they say, what kind of umpire is this? Does he call outside, call high? They do studies. If it's cold or bad weather, there are less penalties called. Makes, hey, they're all human out there after all, right? I'm just saying. Alex Martinez in the gun, five wide receivers for St. Xavier. This is their second offensive possession. Jet in motion, screen pass. It is caught They're outside. It goes to about the 35. Oh, and we're going to have a late, late hit here. Hit. Yep. Elliot Pipkin, the freshman out of Oswego with his ninth catch of the season. Number 87 there. They ran motion to the right side, a little dump screen to the left side, and we cut it inside. Got to stay outside leverage on that play. And then see right here, watch we come in. There's nobody to the outside. He gets a gain of about 10. And let's see, he's out of bounds right now, and there's a late hit right now. We talked about penalties and already two and the big one there for St. Francis. That's a field position flipper right there. As that puts it inside St. Francis territory for a very, very high powered offense behind Alex Martinez. Justin Hunterford started the season as the starter, the quarterback out of Providence Catholic, but he's out with an injury today. Five wide again. Martinez sends a man in motion, Harold Davis. They're going to go to Harold. That one's tipped, and Alex Lomi with an interception and incredible pick, and the race is on. Can he outrun the quarterback? He does. St. Francis' defense scores an interception for Alex Lomi. He takes it 53 yards. Alex Zlomi's first pick of the year is a pick six against St. Xavier. What a catch. He one hand tipped it right to himself and outran Alex Martinez. Wow. I don't think Martinez ever saw him. Watch, he kind of sings it to the flat. I think he did, but who's going to make that play? Julius Superman. Peppers. 
You know, he's not like he's six foot eight. And look at this. You better outrun that quarterback or else films on Sunday is not going to be very nice. But that's an outstanding. And he spikes the ball. Unbelievable that's play. That's outstanding. That is a, that's a play of the decade as far as the defense is concerned. Uh, are they going to call it? For they called a uh, sideline warning on St. Francis. Okay. Coach Curry's a little confused by it. Yeah, take the fun out of the game. You know, I mean, come <laughs> on. Yeah, I mean, you just saw a play you never see. And, yeah, they got a little excited on the sidelines. It'll cost them five yards on the kickoff. Now, see, this is something that St. Francis showed last week, and now St. Xavier, of course, they got the tape, so they know they ran the swinging gate split formation on the extra point. So they had that covered. Alex Zlomi, everybody, unbelievable play. Grayson Barnett on for the extra point. Snaps good, holds down, kick on the way. Looks like it's good from here, and it is. Defense takes it away again, and they score. They had two defensive touchdowns last week against Olivet Nazarene, and a big one right here. We talked about this in the pregame. They were plus nine in the last three games. The offense has not turned the ball over the last two games, and what do we do? We get another defensive score on a turnover. Joe Curry still chirping a bit with the officials, I believe, about that sideline warning. You know, Coach Curry, you know, usually he's, he's pretty jovial. Yeah. You know, when we talked to him before we shoot the pregame, and he was, he was Hold more, on. He, more like. I'm not sure if they reversed that or not. Watch, watch how high he gets up. He, oh, my goodness. He, that is an incredible play. Uh, you, you rack that for a long time. You go back and watch that play years from now. Number 44 from Wilmington. So they will kick it from the 35. They will assess the penalty for the sideline warning. I think they're going to get it for delay a game when he spiked the ball on Sportsman Lake Conduct. Really? Yep, yep. I think that's what it was. They're not, we they're, haven't had a... a they're not going to give you a penalty on, del, on the sideline warning on the first one. Oh, okay. So if you look in the far sideline, maybe we can get a view over there. They need a, a new downage marker because it's broken on the sideline. <laughs> that that's that's a concern. <laughs> and the the, the sideline guy is like, I don't know. Let, let, let's get a guy. You know, it's going to cost us overtime here on a Saturday to get somebody out here to fix it. And he's going to do the best job. I mean, maybe he just holds it up. You know. But uh, they do need to mark where the uh, the line of scrimmage is with that as well. So, so th this guy is saying yeah. it's cold outside. There's there is your uh, your MVP of the game so far, right there. The uh, student worker from St. Francis holding the down marker. And usually, aren't these guys <laughs> baseball players who do this on a side like he said? I gotta uh -huh. hold this. It's cold out here. I gotta flip it manually. He's just gonna have to two hand it. You know, one hand uh, with the I'm with the pole and you gotta make adjustments. Sometimes you know you don't you don't coach for this. <laughs> they're gonna double team it. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna put two guys on it. You know that's what we do here at St. Francis. I, I'm just saying. You help your you help your fellow man. Next man up. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go into the five yard penalty. 10:06 to go. It's seven nothing St. Francis. Luke Nelson to kick it off into a wind. Return from the seven. Angling back to the right side is oh. Dre Devereaux wrapped up at the 26 yard line and. Back on comes the St. Francis defense. That'll get you energized, huh? Oh, that that just an outstanding play. Five is Nick Reefs, the senior out of Fort Wayne, Snyder High School. One of the backup linebackers, special teamers. And I remember seeing Dre Devereaux, because he went to Hobart High School, that's out by me, play. Mm -hmm. He's just like Tasmanian double. <laughs> I mean, he's just a yeah. whirling dervish. Four wides and a tailback right next to Alex Martinez here on first down and 10 from the, they put it at the 28 yard line. To throw, firing across the middle. Oh, he got it again! Almost intercepted again by St. Francis. That was Mason DeLong, the freshman, knocking that one away. Now they list Martinez at six foot tall. I don't believe he's six foot yeah, tall. Yeah, it's close. And watch this. Look at him get in the, in the lane and get his paw up again. Looked right at him. Yeah, he Whole did. time. Second down. Martinez is going to flip it over to the right side. With the carry is Jamari Watson. Ridden out of bounds at around the 34-yard line. Jamari Watson, another sophomore, another young kid out of OPRF. His 30th carry. 
over 100 yards this season in coming in for Mike Ivlo, their starting running back out of Bolingbrook. Now the Cougars, they want to run Temple here. Third down and about seven. Snap back to Martinez. Looking to the right sideline across the middle, has his man caught first down for the Cougars. Written down near midfield. It took a lot to get the big guy down. Mark Sturbiak, uh, the senior out of Munster, and you've seen him play too, haven't you? Yeah, he has seen him play. The ball came loose, but they're going to say he was down. That's a great throw and even a nice catch because he caught it with his hands. First time playing in the cold weather for yep. most of these guys. And look at this catch. Right on the hands, away from his body. Ball security changes the ball because he knows the tackle's coming from the inside. And a pass across the middle is incomplete. Looking for Devereaux on the play. And that one's no good. So brings up second down at the St. Francis 49. They are in, they're in a hurry. Well, St. Francis got to do a, a real nice job of getting their personnel changes in before Munster, or Munster, before St. Xavier yep. runs their offense. Martinez, five-step drop, firing deep, right side, has a man behind the defense, underthrown and incomplete, knocking that one away. A great play by Jamal Stovall, a freshman out of Champaign. That was underthrown by about three yards. That's how Stovall was able to knock that one away. Yeah, actually, if he hits him in stride, that could be six. Watch, yep. he's right by him. He's got three yards on right now on that ball, just a little bit underthrown. And at the end, he gets his arm in there to make that play. Yeah, he got behind the D, just a bit underthrown. Third down and 10, St. Francis 49-yard line. One minute to go, first quarter, and we'll have our first timeout called of the game as well. Big third down here. Well, I guess they're all big at this point when you're playing against St. Xavier when you're playing for uh, what could amount to a conference championship. Well, you got a couple more games after this, but if you lose, you're out. Doesn't it seem like this This is at a frenetic pace? Yes. Doesn't it seem like the game is fast? Th this game is fast. I mean, I know St. Xavier is running up tempo offense. They want to go tempo right now. And now the St. Francis got to get their changes in. But, you know, the play by Zlomi, everything else it just seems like it's a fast game we've only played six minutes. Got a trivia question here, and it's a, a pretty good one do here in just a minute while we have a timeout. You ready for our trivia question? Let's do it. So who is the only St. Francis player to ever be named to the USA Today NAIA Defensive MVP? It's the all-time, you know, the, the biggest defensive award you can get. I know this because I was here. You were here. That's right. We get the answer now. Brandon, you want to wait? What do you think? Right now? And the, of course, the, the guy is in the building today. He's on the other sideline, the head coach for St. Xavier, Mike Feminis, the uh, defensive player of the year, a defensive MVP for the NAIA back uh, in his day in the 80s when he played linebacker here for St. Francis. How about that? Roots go deep. Fired. It is caught, but it's not going to be enough. They got to get him down. A nice second effort up to the 40, but he will be a yard shy. A nice effort by Nick Suzuki. But he's going to come up short. And what do you think here? Go for it on fourth down. Yeah, I think they're going to go for it. St. Xavier is 50% going on to fourth downs this year. So I'm pretty sure they're going to go for it. Fourth down and one. Hard count from Martinez. Nobody jumping for St. Francis. And change the formation a bit and send Watson into the backfield. A lot of time here, but they have time on the clock. 13 on the play clock. Corners are up. Safety back is Lemon. Snap, play action. They're throwing on fourth and one, and it is over and incomplete. St. Francis will take over. It was batted up, and Pipkin could not quite get underneath it. St. Francis again takes the ball away. Nice job of cutting inside the passing lanes. You see, he had a little bit, Martinez had a little bit of a hitch because his guy wasn't open watch. Just a little, eh, kind of slings the ball, and again, the defender cuts inside the route. A great job by Arthur King, number two there on your screen, had a the longest play of St. Francis history last week, a 98-yard interception return for a touchdown. And uh, earlier today, he said this was the biggest game he's playing in in his football career, is what Arthur King said about this game today. Michael Johnson in a tailback, but Ellis going to sling it. Fires outside, has Brandon Ruffin. Breaks one tackle upfield, and he picks up a first down. That's a heck of a play by Brandon Ruffin. We haven't called his name a ton this year, but he's been outstanding in his career. He has 18 career touchdowns, too shy of the all-time receiving touchdown record, which is 20. 
which was accomplished by Troy Torrance back in 2014. Here's Brandon Ruffin. He's also a, a fantastic high jumper. Six foot five, he jumped over. He's an athlete, my friends, and if he can get behind a defense, it's going to be six. Here's Ellis on an empty backfield. It's going to be a quarterback draw. Lock oh, at nice the root, block. and he slides down outside the 40, and that's going to be enough for a 12-yard gain and a first down. Watch this block in the middle. 53 gets pancaked right there. It looked like it was Jake McCreary, the junior center, laying the wood on the block, and that's opened up a huge hole for Aaron Ellis to run through, picking up a first down. They're at the 39-yard line. Three backs with Ellis. Two wide receivers. Motion is Rajan Williams to the outside. Hand off to Johnson. Here comes St. Xavier, and he's going to lose a yard. You would figure that with Coach Feminist, you know, being the All-American linebacker he was, that the linebackers would be pretty good for St. X, <laughs> and they are. They, they, are. they fill the gaps very, very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Josh Hediger and Danny Sirocco there to make the stop. Second and 11 back to the 40. Mike Johnson, the sophomore out of JCA. Play action, and here comes the blitz. He steps up, firing downfield, has Ruffin, and it is up and caught Brandon Ruffin. 40-yard touchdown pass, one shy of the career touchdown record, and we finally get a big play from number 80, Brandon Ruffin. Where have you been, sir? I say this, it seems like every week, but man, Ellis throws a pretty ball, it's doesn't he? It's beautiful. He puts it on the money every time. Extra point will make it 14 zip. A big play from the defense and a big play from the offense. Aaron Ellis finding Brandon Ruffin. His seventh touchdown of the season, 19th of his career. That's why he's a all-conference receiver. And again, they go to a swing gate formation. St. X covers it very well. Kick on the way from Gray. It's up and good. Four plays, 60 yards, 40 of them in one play. It took 80 seconds, and the Saints on top, 14 to nothing, 6.48 to go the first quarter. Coach, you couldn't have scripted a better start to this game. You couldn't, but watch this throw. Watch him, he <laughs> step, watch him step up in the pocket right there, and look, at that's a spiral into the wind double covered look at that <laughs> catch it takes guts to throw that ball with that with rough and double cover but you have to trust that brandon Ruffin's going to go up and get that with his six foot four frame and but, he did but where did he put that ball nick he put it in yep. the only spot that rough could make that catch yep a beauty all around great protection they the blitz went well past the the quarterback they kind of overshot that a bit and uh there's the, the two strikers right there. Aaron Ellis, 16. Brandon Ruffin, number 80. <laughs> and he's giving some credit to his offensive line right there. Number 67, Tom Grady, the right tackle on a Plainfield South. Number 62 there, Jake McCreary. How about that? A quarterback who knows where his bread is buttered, huh? I'm just saying. Wind blew the ball off the tee, so we'll reset that for Luke. Cold day here in Joliet, 39 degrees. It was 77 last week. It was blowing, though. The wind was howling last week. It's it not was. quite as bad, but there's still a breeze out there. All right, here comes the kickoff from Luke Nelson. Just sounded like a frozen football. Return from the five. Well, the leap being and upended at the 25-yard line. Return man, Dre Devereaux. Well, I don't expect the Cougars to panic here being down 14 oh. points early. They know they have a high-powered offense. They know that they can score pretty much whatever they want to. They average over 30 points a ball game, so I don't think they're going to panic at all. Lemon and Jarrell Williams back at safety. Josh Woodard out with an injury. Dakota Door is back in, in uniform, though, this week. Good to see him back. Play action, screen pass. They need some wide receiver blocking there. They got a bit. The catch was made by Suzuki up to the 30-yard line, a pickup of five. You'll take that if you're the Cougars. But nice job of swarming defense. Nice pursuit by the St. Francis defense coming in here. Yes, it was a quick screen, but look how many gold jerseys are over there. Watch, 
That's a decent block, but what? One, yeah. two, three. There are three guys around that ball. Antonio Jamison, the stop. Here's the run up past the 35. That's going to be enough for a first down. And it's Mike Ivlo, the leading rusher, 71 yards a game, which is eighth best in the conference. And the hurry up offense here by St. X. Trips off to the left side here. Ivlo in the backfield with Martinez. And a little hand signal there from Alex to see if they decide to go long with corners up. Safety back. There's the snap. Martinez looking deep. He's looking long, and he, it is overshot. They have their man again. Suzuki got behind the corner on the outside, but overshot again by Martinez. Well, they go to again to what press coverage, and again we're beat on that outside overthrown. You don't see. I mean, I think St. Francis dodging some bullets here with some overthrows and underthrows well, by Alex that, Martinez. This is where you miss Woodard, yep. don't you? Right here. Mm-hmm. Second down and 10. 36 yard line for St. Xavier. Six minutes to go. Linebackers stepping up to that line and see if they bring some heat. Nope. No, now they do. Late blitz, but they fire outside. It is complete and wrapped nice up. Tackle. That's going to save a first down. It is complete out to Harold Davis. I believe that was Cody Randa that made the play. Nope, I'm sorry. Let me take that back. That was Jarrell Williams. Number four, Jarrell Williams. And we talked to Coach Curry before. He says, we just got tackled. Today we got yep. tackled. We make sure we make those open field tackles and not let them get yards after contact. Third down and four at the 42-yard line. Two by two formation for St. X. The snap back to Martinez. Looking right, firing. It's deflected at the line and nearly <laughs> intercepted again by Nick Gilliam. <laughs> if he didn't have the wrap on that hand, he comes up with it. I was just going to say that because remember last week he scooped one up and yep. almost took it in? If he didn't have the big club over there, Mr. Clubber I, I over there. I take that back. Luke Mander, let me give him some credit. I thought it was uh, 96, but it was 90. Luke Mander, yeah, he he's had that. He's trying, he's trying, he's trying. Uh, Stinking club. <laughs> that close to a pick. He's like, Luke oh, Mander. man. And then you see, you look at the stupid club. Yeah. Cut this thing off. And <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fourth down, punting unit on for the Cougars. Back deep to return is Jarrell Williams. I wonder what happened to Lexus here. Snaps a good one. The booming kick. They're going to let that one go. And it will take a St. X hop, and they will down that at the one-inch line. Beautifully done by St. X. The punter on the play, Joe Bailey. Look at that. It doesn't get any better than that. You can tell if you don't know anything about a football team how well they're coached just by watching special teams. Yep. That was great coverage. It's even better punt, but the special team guy, a lot of guys would just sit there and down that to five. But roll, 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 roll until it got to where it was. So what's the strategy here now if you're backed up uh, against your own goal line? Well, who am I going to give it to? <laughs> you know who I'm going to give it to. Yep. I'm going to give it to my running back between tackles, try to get at least three four yards so I can open up the offensive playbook. Maybe a even bit. a sneaky here with the quarterback over the center if, they, if, you, if they're not covered. But, well, of course, I'm, he is. <laughs> I'm, gi I'm giving it to Mr. Smith right now. I formation here. Jordan Smith lined up as the tailback. And those defenders are going to pin their ears. They will quarterback sneak it. And a nice push by the offensive line. Going to give them about a yard or two breathing room. Nice job on that play. 446 and counting here in the first quarter. 14 zip. Francis on top of Xavier. How about a little credit to our TV crew to here today? Getting here early in the cold. It was raining and snowing and sleeting early on. So thanks to them for setting everything up. Ellis throwing here and has a man again. It's Jackson, but he can't hold on. Just <laughs> through his fingertips. It would have been six. But just missed it. We were looking for Lexus, and there he is. And Ellis took a pop at the end. And you know, they called it, yeah, they called the late hit. That's a huge penalty because it gives St. Francis 15 yards and a first. And there it is. Oh, that close to six. Both teams have got what? Their wideouts behind the secondary on a consistent basis here early in the football game. Lex is not very happy with himself, but that would have been a tough grab. I don't even know if he would have caught that ball if he would have stayed on his feet. 19-yard line, so they move it up. First down, that's a big penalty. They're going to run it. 
Jordan Smith in between the tackles. Ball's loose, picked up by St. Xavier. They're going to have to drag him down inside the five. And there's the first turnover by St. Francis. And a flag comes in, and it must have been a late hit because we have a St. Francis player on the ground, and that is the center, Jake McCreary. I wonder if they hit him like a defensive, defenseless player. Well, I didn't see anything, but it's going to be a post-possession foul, if anything. They threw that flag. That's another gift by St. Xavier to St. Francis. I mean, I, I, obviously, I don't want to have the injured player, but that's going to move the ball 15 yards. Player misconduct penalty as well. They called that one on Josh Hediger. And we couldn't see what happened because we were watching the play. And hopefully he's okay. He hopefully he didn't get that bell rung too much. Watch for number 62, the center. Oh, just inside arm strips it. And it's behind the behind that play. So unfortunately we can't exactly see what happened there. But it makes a first and goal situation a little bit easier here for St. Francis as they push it back to the 17 yard line. You like to have the football back though. Four sixteen to go first quarter. Martinez in the gun. Four wide outs, but they run it inside. Nice play. Beautiful tackle. This game is getting a little chippy, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah you can tell it's a neighborhood rivalry, can't <laughs> you? I mean, it's just a little bit edgy. Antonio Jameson the stop. Spinning down Jamari Watson. Second down and five. Quick play. Watson takes the pitch. And upended at about the 12-yard line. Maybe a yard on the play. Again, it's Jamison making the stop. Arthur King comes in, shoots that, diagnoses the play. If he keeps his head up, watch. He shoots it. If he keeps his head up right there, he makes that tackle. Well, Jamison again, three tackles in a row, as I correct myself. Third down and five here for St. Xavier. They need points. I don't think if you're a Cougar fan, you want to settle for a field goal here. Martinez in the gun. Watson left hip, three wide out to the right side. Some hand signaling there from Martinez. He sees something in that St. Francis defense. Here's the snap. He's going to look right. Looking for the fade, and it is overthrown again. Lemon was on the coverage, though. I don't think even if it was a nicely thrown ball, if it would have <laughs> fell into the hands of the intended receiver, Harold Davis. But that's going to bring up the field goal unit. Nicely done by the yeah, defense. He just changed the route tree right there. He went stack formation, so that one's one in front, one over the back, over the top. And he tried to hit the guy over the top. Going to bring up the kicker, Abdul Mahdi. He's been fantastic. Five for five inside the 40 yard line. Six for 10 on the season. He's been automatic this year from this distance. It's going to be a 29 yard try on the way. Looks good from here. It is. First points of the game for the Cougars, 14 to 3, with 3.03 remaining in the first quarter. It's a good stand there by the defense to hold them to three. Outstanding job because you take a look. I mean, we got a break on the penalty, push the ball back, but a turnover and a hold them to three in your red zone, that's outstanding. And we talked about that in the pregame too with Coach Curry. The opposition has been averaging 80% in red zone scores when they get down there to hold them to a field goal. After that situation for the defense, now Coach Curry is going to go over and talk to the referee. What could they be talking about? Well, he's talking about, I think he's talking about either the uh, personal foul. I don't know if they got him for a personal foul. Yeah, they, they, they didn't. You're absolutely or, right. Or, or they got him for spiking the ball after he returned it. Hopefully Jake McCreary is doing okay. He's He's been the center and a couple very big blocks to spring some big plays. So he's been nice today. I'm guessing that after the, the football game, whoever wins or loses, there's going to have to be like 500 pounds of ice because this is going to be one of those. <laughs> yeah. I've got bruises. I didn't know I had bruises until I woke up in the morning. <laughs> Waiting for the kickoff here from Mahdi. There's the 
here's the kick. It's a short kick and nicely played on the inside and it will be returned to the 38. Hey, were they trying an onside kick there? No, what they did is they took their flyer and they did a pooch kick, a short kick to the left and brought the flyer guy from the right side in motion so he can cover over there. That was by design. And look at Roberts. He says, I don't I don't get a chance to return many kicks, but I'm going to take this. And I'm going to go down to a knee. I'm going to sit there and fight for it. Here comes the St. Francis offense back on again. The first time we'll get a chance to see Perry Brian Barber and the freshman out of New Orleans. Been fun to watch the bowling ball of a running back. They're going to run it with Barberin. Nice carry up to near midfield. And it's going to be just shy, about a nine yard carry for number nine. It's not that cold. I mean, it's 39 degrees at, at kickoff time, but when the colder it is, the slicker the ball gets. Yep. And guys aren't used to that right now. So they're really going to have to have what ball security in the back of their mind. If I feel contact, put it away. Second down, they're going to mark it at the 49. So second down and two here for St. Francis. 2.24 remaining first quarter. They're up 14 to three. And quarterback keeper for Ellison. He's going to pick up the first down all by himself up to the 47. That was a dangerous run for the QB. Second time we've seen quarterback draw in this you, game you know, in the first quarter. We haven't seen it the whole year, I don't think, too much. Not a big fan, to be honest with you. We've seen too many quarterbacks wearing the brown and gold go down with injury. Because, well, I mean, they're tough kids. They, they want to run the football. They want to they want to help their team. But when you're when you play the most important position on the field, you got to be a little more careful. But he picks up the first there. It's at the 46. Turn and give to Barberin. Nice stutter step shoulder down. Look at that. It takes two, three Cougars to bring him down at the 42 yard line. He'll pick up five yards. All day long. You don't you don't think of guys of his stature. Watch this move. Watch him give him a leg, take it away. And then watch him fish this I'll run over There's you. Three cougars. <laughs> I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Ninety-five seconds to go here in quarter number one. Second and five. Four wide receivers. Where's Ruffin at? This is his spot. He's wide left. Snap looking that way. Pump fakes in some trouble here is Ellis. He's gonna be wrapped up and the ball came out. They're going to say it's a fumble. Return is on for St. Xavier. And taking this all the way, Brenton Johnson. He'll take it for the score. That's going to go for 56 yards. And the fumble return for a touchdown. And just when St. Francis has them on the ropes, the second turnover of the game ends up in a touchdown. Couldn't really tell if he was down by contact. It sure looked like it. The ground. I thought the play was over, Coach. Let, let's see right here. Takes it, tucks it away. Boom. No, no, no yep, he, no, was, on he was, top was on top of the top player. Of the defender. That's yeah. a good call. Absolutely. Nice job on the replay there by our crew. You know, and, and that's, we're wrong 90% of the time, whatever we think yeah. happens. <laughs> replay always proves it's wrong, and a heck of a play by St. Xavier. That's why they're number 10 in the country. They turn turnovers into points. Smotty, the extra point. Look at the leg. It's good. We have a four point game. It's 14 to 10. St. Francis holding on. A defensive touchdown and a big pass play to Ruffin. The two uh, touchdowns for St. Francis. They also have two turnovers, though. And one of the things, like that guy there, right there, Coach Curry says they're going to win you ball games. It's turnovers and touchdowns, turnovers and big plays. And so far, they're splitting those categories well, right you, now. You go back to last week, Nick. If you look at the stat sheet, St. Francis should have lost by 30 points. Yep. But because they got the turnovers, they won a ball game. And now in the first quarter, St. Francis is out playing St. Xavier, but now it's only a four point ball game because of what? Two turnovers. They got a field goal out the first turnover. Now they got a scoop and score off of this turnover and they're in the ball game. The only points for St. Xavier coming off the turnovers. You got to take care of the football, especially against teams like the Cougars. They're going to bite you every chance they get. And you know, this is only the third road game that St. Francis, I mean, St. Xavier has played all year. And they're one on one road. So, I mean, it, it upsets your rhythm. They just came off with three straight home games. Yep. So they're not used to going on the road, even though it's a short bus ride over from Chicago. Mati on to kick it again. 
112 remains here in our opening frame. Nice crowd here on the yeah. sidelines. Same type of kick and running up to make the play will be Williams. He'll be taken down immediately at the 30 yard line. They don't want to give Williams and Lexus Jackson a chance. On comes that St. Francis offense. Just got to take care of that football. We've seen how how much firepower they have. Thirty one yard line is where they will start. Michael Johnson is in at running back. We've seen all three of them so far in this game. Jordan Smith, Mike Johnson, Perry Barber. Rushing four. Johnson looking for a hole and not a lot of room as he takes it for two. Under 60 seconds. Linebackers again for St. X doing a nice job, especially from the inside linebacker position. They do a nice job of tackling. Yep, they really do. Second down after the run from Mike Johnson. Four down linemen, they're going to rush four against Ellis, and they're going to get to him. Steps up in the pocket. He's looking deep again. He lets it fly over to Lexus, and they had some miscommunication there. There was a ton of room for Lexus, but I think Aaron Ellis thought he was going to go long, and we have another penalty. Wow. Again, they hit Aaron Ellis late, and again, they give him 15 yards. Well, that time, Lexus stopped his route because he thought that Ellis was going to run to the left side. And watch. He steps up, steps up. He looks for him, and he Oof. stopped the route because he thought he was going to break it off. And if he would have kept on going, he's got to actually come back. That's a hard throw to make if your quarterback, you're on the left hash, throwing all the way across to the numbers on the right side. That's a tough, that's a tough call there. I, I don't know if that was necessarily late. I mean, I think the defender was kind of beyond that point of no return as he threw that football. But St. Francis will take it up to the 48-yard line. They're going to run it to Johnson again. Trying to sneak inside between the tackles, and he'll pick up three. Well, it's all about safety. Back in the day, the defensive uh, lineman could take two steps and still hit the quarterback. Now you can't. So it's very hard for defender to know when he can yeah, or yeah. cannot make contact. So that's why you see guys a lot of times just pull up. Final couple of seconds will take off here in quarter number one. and. <laughs> Coach, we've had ourselves uh, enough action for an entire game here in the first 15 minutes. We'll take a quick break here on the, on the stream and on the radio. When we come back, we'll put a fresh 15 up there. It's 14 to 10. St. Francis leads St. Xavier early on the USF Sports TV Network. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Build character for life at championsofcharacter.org. Welcome back out here to a chilly Memorial Stadium here in Joliet, just off Jefferson Street, ATI Field at Memorial Stadium. We'll have some first quarter numbers here in just a second as we flip sides. Now St. Francis has the win at their back. Let's see if they can do something with it. Two wide receivers on each side here on second down and seven at the Cougar 49. And look back for the play. Change things up here at the line. Lexus shifting over to the left. Here's Ellis. The rush steps up. Linebacker around the ball is tamped and incomplete. Dangerous play, but it's going to fall harmlessly to the turf third down. Time of possession was even in the first quarter. Third down conversions. St. Francis defense done a nice job. St. Xavier's only one out of five third downs. St. Xavier only ran the ball for seven yards in the first quarter. See him looking to the sideline to get the signal. I'd like to see him convert this third and long situation because now they can take what more time off the clock and get into a better rhythm. Got the call in third down and seven at the Cougar 49 showing blitz to the left of the offense. They bring it. 
Aaron Ellis using his legs, firing on the run. He throws it away. Sliv to play another day. They're going to have to punt it away. And with a punter like we have, that's a probably a smart call. Yep. Luke Nelson in the first quarter, one punt for 45 oh, yards. Oh, had a penalty. Kind of offsides on St. Xavier. They're going to get Christian Lett, the sophomore out of Thornwood. Was he the blitzer on the play? Yes, I believe he was. So instead of fourth down and seven, third and two, third and two. Man, St. Xavier costly penalties here in the first quarter and a couple ticks here. Third down and two, I formation, Johnson the tailback. Snap back to Ellis, play action, and he's hit, and that one is incomplete. Wow. They're going to say, I don't know, coach. <laughs> I, I didn't know. think his arm was going forward. I thought I don't think the so ball either. popped up from the hit. Wow. <laughs> I thought that was a fumble. St. Xavier was going to scoop and score Let's again. See. Oh, oh I, that, he knocked it out of his hands. I, think. I thought we got a break. I, I, I do too. On that one. Derek Hosselton, the senior defensive end there to hit, make the hit. The leader in sacks, the leaders in tackle for a loss and would have had his second forced fumble. But referee on St. Francis' side of some some 50 50 calls. St. Francis will mercifully punt this one away. Nearly blocked, but Nelson gets it away. Angles it right. Get in there. And corner. it stops inside the 10, takes a nice roll inside the 5. And Luke Nelson answers the Joe Bailey punt with a beautiful one of his own. But I'd like to see him, I'd like to see us run the ball in that situation, especially with Smitty or Barbs, you know, more of a power running game there. Hey, how about a little shout out to the Randas here? The uh, parents. Well, I, I'm to telling you what, was that nice <laughs> or what? Cody Randa's uh, family was in the building today doing a little tailgating. We were over a there talking tailgating. to them. Well, I know they had a full brisket making sandwiches. Hooked that us was up. That was good stuff. Thank you very much to the Randas today. Feeding us on this cold, chilly fall day. They're going to run it inside Ivlo's first nice real big ball. hole. But yeah, he's taken down right at the 10. Nice job by the safety. Williams coming up and making the stop, but he's only going to pick up five or six. And if he doesn't make that tackle, it's off to the races with Mike Ivlo. St. Xavier's doing something nice on their offensive line. Look at the split between the center and the right guard. It's, like, it's got to be three yards. Play action, throwing. It's checked down. Got a tackle. He gets it out to the 20 for a first down. And Making the play, Harold Davis, the sophomore out of Joliet Catholic, played with Michael Johnson, same class. Martinez was only 5 out of 13 in the first quarter for 53 yards. He kind of throws the ball almost sidearm, seems yep. to be. On that play, yeah. 3-3-5 three, three, defensive formation. Here's the blitz. They let it loose as Martinez throwing deep, and it is incomplete. Arthur King knocks it away at the last minute. I thought that Pipkin was going to corral that football, but another great job by Arthur King. And watch the closing speed on this. This is a pretty pass right here by Martinez. He puts it right in the hands. And it looks like he oh, has King didn't even look back. Right there. <laughs> and then, no, as soon yep. as the ground comes out, that's a good call by Side Joe. Popped out right at the end there. Wow. Second down and 10, Martinez to throw. Looking right this time, nothing there. Great coverage and down he goes. A gain of one on the scramble. Among them, number 99, Chris Peters out of Frankfurt. And also Cody Randa, we just talked yep. about his family giving us props and food before the game, but he closed it and made that sack happen. That was Chris Peters out of the now defunct Lincoln Way North High School. So third down and eight, St. Francis D's, like, like you said, coach, great on first down, or third down rather. Martinez the snap, firing left side. It is caught, but the You're tackle's short. there. And carefully don't get the flag. The pass was complete to Davis, but put down by Williams. Could have been probably th a flag thrown for throwing him to the ground unnecessarily, but he will be a yard shy. So fourth down, but you're at your own 30 yard line here, coach. Dangerous play. Wow. 
Wow. They're going to go for it on fourth down and two inside their own 30. This might be just a draw them off, but yeah. not by formation, is it? Do not jump. You're absolutely right. They snap it. They, it's going to be a quick kick. They almost had a block. So depending on the bounce, St. Francis gets a nice bounce there, actually. Smart play on the punt, and St. Francis will have it at their own 34. Now, this game is kind of settled into what we expected. Yep. A little back and forth, a little tug of war going. Big play seemed to be over a little bit, so let's see if any team can get into a rhythm and have a seven, eight, nine play drive. Chew up the clock for four or five minutes. I don't see it. I, I, I see touchdowns coming from no less than 30 yards the rest of the game. Just a feeling I have, which is the way these two offenses roll. Haven't really, none of the teams so far have shown uh, any adeptness at, at rushing the football. They both have thrown the ball relatively well, but no, no team is running it well. I'm going to try this time with Barber in looking for the edge, but he's cut off at the 35-yard line. Looked like it was Hediger among the stoppers, along with number 37, Trevon Anderson. And watch, if he just stays inside his offensive lineman right there, stays right on his butt, he has the opportunity to get a couple more yards. Just one there, second down and nine. Their own 35 here for St. Francis. Empty backfield for Ellis. Under 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. It's 14 to 10, St. Francis. Snap back to Aaron. Needs some help. He's still on his feet, trying to evade. He does. And he's not going to get away too much longer. Down he goes. It's going to be a sack for St. Xavier. Aaron Ellis probably should have thrown that one away. St. Xavier's defense is really, really quick and pursues very, very well. Watch this. He pulls it down, steps up in the pocket, breaks that tackle. Now all you got to do as soon as you get there, look down the field, throw the ball away. Christian Lett makes the play. Third down and 13 for St. Francis. Four wide receivers for Aaron Ellis. Drops back. Max protects. Steps up in the pocket. And down he goes again. Hediger, another sack for St. Xavier. That's his fourth and a half sack. The seventh tackle for a loss. But a flag on the play again. Was it taunting or celebration? Wow, it's going to be another first down. He's, he's gone. He's gone. Yep. That's his second one. He's gone. Did they explain what he did? Wow, that's I, unfortunate. I, I, I didn't. I didn't see was, anything to, to necessitate that. You, you got to let him play. You got to let guys play. And he didn't show up anybody. No. You know, Coach yeah, Feminist yeah, is yeah, going to. Yeah, it benefits. Benefits St. Francis. I get it, but dog no, it. I, no, I, no. Let guys play. Yeah. He didn't do anything obscene or make a gesture. See he was excited. Can, he made a play. See if we can pick something up here, but. No, he just he didn't. Number five here, jumping up. Oh, he must have said something. You see the? Did you see him turn around? He must have said something. It wasn't an action, but it must have been words because that official turned around and yeah, said, "What yeah, did you just I, say?" I mean, come on, look yeah. at Coach Feminist. He's talking to him. I mean, you you. I agree. I, agree. You, I don't think it's you, enough to. You don't think that you watch a football game tonight that those guys don't say anything on the field. <laughs> you got to let kids be kids. All right. And do a better job of it. Look at <laughs> feminists. He's like, come on, man. Are you serious? Yeah. I, Coach I, feminists, I agree with you 100%. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I, that's. You know what that, that could do, too, is it's going to fire up that Cougar squad. Yeah, that's. I, I don't know what he said, and it obviously must have been very, very bad, but I don't know if that's enough you know, to necessitate that penalty. as an official, you have to talk to the players on the field. Yeah, say, I, that's hey, a great can, point. Can, can yep. you tone it down a little bit? Great point. Can you just, this is your warning. Just, I know this game is a rivalry game. Right on the money. Just, just tone it down. Right on the money. You just got to say, hey, look. And, and you got to think about the emotion of this game. You, you can't play this game. And and you can't and play, be friendly. Yeah, I, I don't you know? care if you're playing tiddlywinks, Nick. Yeah. You you just let them play and show a little emotion. You know that yeah. that that's fine. With this high leverage of a game, 
Yeah, it's that's it's unfortunate because he's one of their best players. Josh Hediger is starting inside linebacker, and they're going to be without him the rest of the game. But like you said, it benefits the the Saints, no doubt about that. They're not going to apologize for anything. Here's Barberin on the carry on first down. They'll take it to the 48-yard line of St. Xavier. Second down, 10 and a half to go. This game was a little chippy. <laughs> I, I get it. Uh Mistake, I yeah. still get it, but yep. if you're playing this game in August, all right, and you're yep. playing ABC University, 100% <laughs> percent agree with you, coach. Unfortunate for St. Four down, three linebackers. Corners are way back. Safeties are deep. Hand off to Barber, and he'll pick up. Ooh, still fighting for that first down. Look at him go, and he falls on the ground and. Who picked it up? That's the big question. St. Xavier looks like they have it, and they do. Third turnover of the game for St. Francis. And he was fighting for extra yards, and that's why the ball yep. popped out. I told you, you know, that it's going to fire up that group over there. Came out at the end of this play. He gets stopped the point of attack. Look, he's still up. He's still up. Swing to the outside, and that ball, yep, the ball came out. <sighs> turnovers, turnovers. <laughs> Third one, second lost, 9.57 to go. And here comes an, what do you want to bet they score on a big play here? Four wide receivers, three off to the right. Blitz being shown, they run it at him, and it is a low ball, but it is caught, and it's off to the races for Devereaux. Up the middle, and he's tripped up by Lemon at the 25-yard line. And now St. X is going to go yep. tempo again. World's against us. That's the mentality right now for St. Xavier. Martinez in the gun. No huddle offense for St. X. Three wides right, one left. Devereaux motion to the backfield and going to reset the offense here. Under 20 here on the play clock. Plenty of time. Devereaux back to the slot right. And oh, nearly intercepted by Arthur King. He saw that coming a mile away. It was Pipkin, the intended receiver on the slant. And he's chirping to the St. Xavier sideline. Well, King was giving him a big cushion. That's why they reset. And they were going to go up on top to the left side when they saw the cushion. But he just undercut that route. Arthur King, it's up for this game. Jet motion. They give it to Devereaux, puts his shoulder down up to the 20 yard line. It's only a gain of three, third down and seven. Dre Devereaux, one of the few seniors on this team. And he's not very big at all. He, they list him at 5'9", 175. I don't know if he's that big. Two by two, two formation, third down and seven. There's number 15, Alex Martinez, going back and forth with starts with Justin Hunterford. But Hunterford out with an injury, so it's Martinez's squad today. Here comes the pressure. He's going to have to roll right. And wrapped up, throws it away as he sits. That's a fantastic play by Martinez, waiting to the last millisecond to throw that one away. And it was Malik Thurman putting on the pressure, the junior out of Proviso West, the team's leading tackler. You have a lot of good things to say about Malik, huh? But yeah, he's he's done very well, and we'll see that he just took him down. But St. Francis in this series has shown all-out blitz formation twice. They put seven, eight, nine guys in the box, and they're saying to uh, Cougars, "We're blitzing." Abdul Mahdi, a 37-yard try for the senior kicker out of Bogan. He's six for ten, like we mentioned, five for five inside 40 yards. This one is just inside 40. Left hash into the wind on the way. Wind holds it up, and it is good. A beautiful kick by Motti, and it draws St. Xavier within one. 14 to 13, 843 to go in the first half. Turnovers keeping St. X in this ball game. <laughs> All 13 points for St. X immediately following turnovers. Got to knock that off. You know, the, the, the bad thing is you have three turnovers. The good thing is you're still winning after points off of all those turnovers. Five plays, 38-yard drive, minute 14 for the Cougars. <laughs> so I just got a text message from Dave Hilbert. And you know, if you ever get a text message from Dave Hilbert, yeah, the well, former well, SID, it's going to be good, right? Yes. He said he did some quick research, and it doesn't look like St. Francis has ever led St. Xavier by 14 points. 
Definitely not since 2004. Never up by 14 points over St. Xavier at any point in time. Really? <laughs> How about that? Dave Hilbert, everybody, got a new job over there at East Carolina University. Living the dream out there on the beach. He's a pirate now, right? He's a pirate. Yeah. Trying to get away from all of those uh, windmills, the wind turbines here in the plains. He's afraid of those, by the way. Well, he wouldn't like where my daughter goes uh -oh. to school because every time we drive down the uh, Purdue, yeah. he, he, <laughs> there's, of them, yeah. there's a wind turbine <laughs> farm right now. That, that, that'd probably make him go bonkers. Oh, that's great. Listening to 88.7 WCSF Joliet. And a long kick. It'll go to Williams. He will return it from the eight. Nice return for Jarrell up to the 36-yard line. Beautifully done. 8.38 to go. It is 2 o'clock on the nose. Jarrell Williams stepping in with the injured Josh Woodard. But he takes the sideline, and I like this return because he doesn't try to go across the field. He gets what he can get. Gives St. Francis a good starting position here. All right. Drive. Hold on to the football here, boys. Who's the one that's going to hold on to the football? That's the running back that's going to get the playing time. So Mike Johnson, he's in there now. Corners up, safety's deep. Four down linemen, three linebackers. They rush four, drop eight. Drop seven, I should say. Nice check down. Modest pickup, about four or five yards that time. Out to Ray Velo. Haven't called his name in a while since his breakout game a few weeks ago. This is just a nice job. Now the wide receiver comes back, comes back, comes back. Hey, we'll take three, four yards. That's all we need right now. Start thinking about who you want to talk to here at halftime. Two by two here for Ellis. Johnson, the tailback in the pistol. St. Xavier rushing four. They're going to run it to Johnson. Not a lot of room. Only two yards to be had there. It's going to be third down and four. And the way things have been going, I'd like to see St. Francis convert this because St. Xavier's kind of on a roll here a little bit. Mike Johnson, 52 carries, 188 yards, three scores for number 23 coming into the game today. Two wide outs, left one to the right. The tight end on the left-hand side of the line. They're going to throw it and incomplete. Oh. Looking for Zach Marino on the hitch route. Brings yeah, up fourth down. Little comeback right past the, the yard marker. Right there, he would have had the first down. Just a little low yep. throw. And give it back to St. Xavier here with 7.23 to go and just a one-point lead. And Luke Nelson needs a big kick here. Here's the wind behind him, so I expect a, a boomer here. Good snap. I don't know. Kind of hit off the side on that one. The fair, no, it wasn't a fair catch made at the 15 yard line, but they're not going to get much past that. 7 11 to go in the game. St. Xavier will take it at their 18 yard line. Pretty good stretch here for St. Francis. Winners of three of their last four, averaging 41 points a game. They're plus 13.8 along with plus nine on the turnover margin in those last four games. What are you dressing up for Halloween here, Coach? I haven't Halloween decided weekend? yet. I'll have to figure it out when I go home. How about this? You go as Coach Curry. I'll go as Dave Lucetta. Here's oh, Mike you. Ivlo on the carry. He's got a little bit of a hole, and he'll pick up 12, 13, 14 yards, 15 yards on the carry. Biggest run of the game for St. Xavier. Mike Ivolo doing the job on the ground for the Cougars all game long, or all season long, I should say. Running it nice again, play. but he's wrapped up by Alex. Nope. He's wrapped up by Alex Rudiger. I almost, almost said Alex Zlomi, but it was the nose tackle, the freshman out of Joliet Catholic, Alex Rudiger, coming from a big football Joliet family, the Rudigers. St. Francis showing blitz again. 
Second down and 10. Four wide receivers. Quick throw, it's batted at the line and incomplete. It was Malik Thurman getting up and knocking that one down. We've seen that from both defenses already today. Yeah, hands up, he can't get through. Right in his face but mask. It, 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 it's kind of a scheme thing for St. Francis right now. They're not gonna let St. Xavier, who averages over 300 yards of passing offense, just sit there and pick you apart. So they're gonna put pressure on you. Showed it again. Yep, showing the blitz on the outside. Same formation for the Cougars as well. They line up in a three by one, but they're gonna swing Harold Davis off to that left side. So two by two here from the left hash, 629 left to play. Show blitz, they're gonna drop the defensive end. Screen pass left side, nice and a tackle. great tackle outside. Only a gain of one or two to be made on the play. It's Arthur King, he's playing very, very well today. When you show the blitz look, especially early and you're committed to it, You've got to have a lot of faith in your cornerbacks to make one-on-one -on -one tackles and look at this. Come up, make that tackle, because if he gets by you, it's Katie by the door. So my two nominations for halftime interview are Zlomi and King. I'll let you pick. Okay. Fourth down, punt unit on. The St. Francis D has been playing great today. Beautiful oh, punt. Nice Look punt. at that one spiral right through the air, and it takes a, a it lucky bounce for St. Francis into the end zone for a touchback. Thank you very much. Joe Bailey and Luke Nelson, two great punters. We just saw Bailey again. This boom one there. That was into the wind. I mean, not a stiff wind, but into the wind nonetheless. Thanks for joining us here on GoFightingSaints.com. The best. TV broadcast in the NAIA, no doubt about it. Coach making a fascist statement, the hoodie and the stocking <laughs> hat and the baseball hat, all right? So he's, he's covered. He's, he's, he can't be found without that cap on, that's for sure. All right, St. Francis has it at their own 20 here, 5.50 to go first half. There's the snap to Ellis, give to Johnson. Just not a lot of room for any of the running backs on either side. He takes uh, it up to the 24. He'll take a, a four-yard carry. His, he, he did. Lane to his left side. He did. If he would bounce it to the left side, would have got more yardage. Agreed. And to see right there, right there, if he just bounces, he can take on 24. It's Mike Johnson and the quarterback, Aaron Ellis. Third on the depth chart starting off the season was Aaron. Aaron Ellis, three out of eight. Throwing the football. Here he is again, firing off to the right side and incomplete looking for Velo, but it was at his feet. Third down. They are vacating the middle of the defense, so it'd be time. Oh, now there's a flag, a late flag thrown by a side judge. What could this be for? I mean, the way this is going, it's going to be on St. Xavier, right? It, it was way after the play. A little meeting of the minds. Ray Velo. That is met with a standing ovation by the St. Xavier crowd. <laughs> and it was an incomplete pass. It's not like he caught it. Yeah, there must be some words or something going on down there. I don't know. I, Ray Velo's walking I, off with his palms to the sky. I, like, I, I don't I, know. I think there's an argument because said, I'm going to Spider-Man for Halloween. <laughs> and the other guy said, I'm going for Spider-Man. So I think they're arguing about yeah, what they're dressing up for uh, Halloween. Must be it. So 15 yards from the spot. Here's Aaron Ellis on third down and long, and he's going to be sacked. Getting up from the pile, Derek Hosselton again. He's the one that always causing havoc in the offensive backfield. And now... St. Francis, it's fourth down in Jefferson, and they're going to have to punt it from their own end zone. And he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. Actually does a nice job of just securing that ball because he get hit right in the arm with the ball. And what that penalty has done is flip field position. All right, Luke. See what you got here, brother. Luke Nelson, number 82, the senior out of Lions High School in LaGrange. Special team player of the week. High oh. snap, it's slow. He did get it off just barely. And nicely done by the return man to come up and catch that ball. The return is on from Suzuki. Not a lot of yards though. He very easily could have let that bounce, but he made a nice play to make sure he grabbed it. And that's what re good returners are gonna do for you. 
not give up your unnecessary yards. He does a nice job, but that ball was almost blocked. Yes, it was. High, slow snap. And who's the special teamer that made that play? It was Roger Thigpen. Great field position for the Cougars. First down and 10 at the St. Francis 35. 420 remains here in the first half. Five wide. Blitz is on for St. Francis. Can they get to him in time? They can't. It is complete upfield, and it will be a first down, and they break the tackle. 15, 10, 5, and that is where he will go down. It'll be first and goal after the catch and, and run another, by Dre Devereaux. There's a flag. It's going to be on St. Francis. He's roughing the passer. Missed that, too. We're just going to have to keep a camera on the quarterback after the play because there's been a lot going on out there, back there. See, oh, come on. Same call was made on St. Xavier, though, I guess. At least they're being consistent. And a nice play by Devereaux. Like you said, the Tasmanian Devil making the play and making it first down and goal at the three-yard line. St. Xavier looking to take the lead. They will run it to Ivlo. He's going to walk in untouched. Touchdown, Cougars. 19-14. Extra point on the way with four minutes to go. Turnovers, penalties, turnovers, yep. penalties. And the difference, St. Francis or St. Xavier not turning the ball over. Nice crowd down from the south side today. But 103rd and Pulaski. Full disclosure. I am a St. Xavier graduate, class of 06. They gave you a piece of paper? They did, yeah. Just to get you out of school? They or? must have. I don't know if what I did to earn it. Good snap, kick up. It's on the way. 20 to 14. It's a touchdown difference. Four minutes to go. It is a two play drive. 20 seconds, 35 yards. Big help from a penalty. You look at the points that the Cougars have scored here in the first half, and none has been with a sustained drive. Nope. It's been a turnover, it's been a penalty. Same goes for St. Xavier. Look at that guy's head. <laughs> I'll stand up for you any That's day. That's right, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you for your service. You got the blankie. He's all set. <laughs> I don't know if his leg is shaking because he's cold or what. <laughs> it's not even Halloween, and we got blankies out. Yep. We got scars out. We got the Alaskan hoodie out. There is Mike Feminis. He was the defensive coordinator when Coach Curry was a player here at St. Francis. He was a roommate of our athletic director, Dave Laquetta. He was a defensive MVP in the NAIA back in, gosh, what was it, 88, 89? Yeah, that was a really good football team that year, too. I'm giving I'm, I'm making him older than uh, no I was right 1989 he's a St. Francis Hall of Famer back in 1996 had the most tackles ever in a game in St. Francis history that was 29 and he holds the record for most tackles in a career how many tackles do you think he had in a career I'm going to say 462 429 see I was close Mike Feminist the best defensive player to ever put on a Saint uniform now coaching the rivals up on the south side of Chicago. And we're going to have a delay of game. Oh, no, they got the timeout. They did get the timeout in before the flag. Four minutes to go. Coach, coach is there for St. Xavier. Not too happy about it. Have to burn that one. Well, I don't know why you would call a timeout there. If, if you take a delay of game, you push the ball back 30 yards. It's not like their kicker can kick it into the end zone. They haven't been doing that. So St. Francis, after one quarter, if they've been winning, they are three and one, which is the case here. After one quarter, they were up. We'll see if that can hold up. In the first quarters of games, they've outscored 92 to 65. So they've already, they've, they've started strong all year long. They got to maintain, got to take care of that football. Play all four quarters, as they say. All right, Mahdi ready to go here. Four minutes to go in the half. It's St. Xavier up by six, 20 to 14. That kick will go over the head. Oh, Alexis Jackson makes an over-the-shoulder catch, and he's going to return it. 
Sees a little seam here on the right side. There goes Lexus before he's ridden out of bounds. And another flag coming in after the play. It's going to be a holding in it. You would think. Or a block in the back. I think I saw a block in the back out there. Oh. They're going to get Tariq Thurman on the penalty. So, God, penalties, guys. Field position is too important. So the 10 yard penalty puts it inside the 20 yard line. Seventeen yard line is where St. Francis will start. Three fifty three to go. All right, see if St. Francis can number one hold on to the football and number two move it move it downfield. Running it with Johnson hit at the line. Nowhere to go. Nice job by Joel Cosenza from his linebacker spot. Watch he'll knife in and make this play on the outside. Does a nice job of taking on the block and making that tackle. They gave him a yard. So second down and nine for Aaron Ellis. I mean, St. Francis at their best when they're throwing the football. And that means that offensive line has to protect. The last couple of series, Aaron Ellis has been hit. Firing out route. It is caught. At the 22 yard line, if he would have just went upfield, he might have had that first down, but he went backward. That's Jalen Moore. Had a big game last week. Just Two turn touchdowns. Upfield, don't cut it back inside. Turn up, up your outside shoulder. See what you can get. Robbie Brindley, the senior out of Naz, Nazareth Academy, makes the play. There's Jalen Moore. Two touchdowns last week. One catching, one running. They call him the, uh, the young Lexus. Third down and five for St. Francis. Big third down here for the Saints. Ellis to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Has some room to run. He's going to have to hurry, though. He is tracked down at the 26. And it's going to be awful close to a He's first down. Short yep. from where they marked it. Yeah, you're right. If that far sideline judge is to be believed, it'll be fourth down and short. Here we are, Memorial Stadium. Pretty good, decent crowd for St. Xavier. And you see the punt unit come on for St. Francis. Probably the, the safe bet there. St. Francis 0 for 4 on, on third. Make it 0 for 5 now on third down. Snaps a good one here to Luke. Time to get it off, end over end, and it will take a bounce, but it'll stop, and secondary hop will go in favor of St. Francis inside the 40. 134, 3, 2, 1. There's the whistle. 131 to go here in the half. Well, what you want to do right now is not let them score. They're still a minute 31, and with the high-powered offense that the Cougars have, they're very, yep. they have a very good chance of scoring right here. And the way this game has gone here in the first half, Nick, I mean, the turnovers and penalties have been the key to the first half. St. Francis started off with 14 points, but then St. Xavier tacked on 20 unanswered. It's 20 to 14. And Alex Martinez will get it back inside his own 40-yard line. Five wide receivers. The motion man is Davis. He'll get it on the jet sweep. Turn up field on the sideline. It came out, but... Right there at the sideline, out of bounds. See where they mark it. A 41 yard line. No, you, you don't get forward progress with the fumble going yep. out of bounds, but yep, 41. And again, St. Xavier quick to the line, second down and seven. Martinez to throw. Nothing downfield, has to evade the pocket. Firing on the run, it is complete. And turning up field is their main man, number 11, Suzuki. And he makes another big play for the Cougars up to the 40-yard line. He does a nice job of spinning off coverage. When, what I mean by that is getting away from the initial defender and making positive yards. Here's Martinez 
More pressure. Steps up, firing downfield. Has a man behind the D, but he's overthrown and incomplete in the end zone. St. Xavier wanted the flag, but didn't get it. I think feet just got tangled up there. They did, inadvertent contact. Second down after the incomplete pass, 60 seconds to go. Here's the motion man, Will Wilson off to the left side. Martinez oh. had a hand oh. on him, but he escapes again. He's going to tuck it and go. And big hit down there at the 40-yard line. See, Collision there between Antonio Lemon and Martinez. You always see defensive players get what? Penalties for targeting. Mm. Can an offensive guy get a penalty for time? Sure, you put yeah. his head down. Third down and ten. Big third down here. We're under a minute to go. Safety's coming up. Ready for the blitz. Malik Thurman ready to get at the quarterback here on third and long. I think we're going to forego our halftime interview here. Martinez screen pass left side. The blocking is there. Lemon whiffs on the tackle. First down for St. Xavier. They had him behind the line of scrimmage, but Lemon couldn't corral him. Didn't break down. Got to keep your feet chopping and widen your base out a little bit. Had him right where you wanted him. No huddle offense. First down up to the 25 yard line. Blitz shown again by St. Francis. See if they bring the house here. They do. They're going to bring everybody. Throwing into the end zone. It's one on one and it's well overthrown. Yeah, and they, oh, they do throw get it. us for holding. Antonio Lemon again. It was Harold Davis, the intended receiver. And the penalty is going to give him another first down. A little discussion here about that probably about where they're going to put the ball half the distance well by pass interference I don't think he impeded his progress so pass interference if you know, I'm arguing on catchable football see it again oh yeah he grabbed him pretty good there <laughs> there's that replay again Two wide receivers on each side. The back is Watson. Motion. They're going to counter. Watson left side. Upfield and head down. And he is in. Touchdown. Cougars on the board with 32 seconds to go. They extend the lead to 12, 26, 14. And that's 26 unanswered yep. for the Cougars. See it again. Cross buck action. Monty on for the extra point. We've got two really good small college kickers in this game. <laughs> yeah, today. we really do. And punters. Kick up and good. 27 to 14. St. Xavier led it 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Like you just mentioned, 27 unanswered here for the Cougars. Turnovers, penalties. A penalty helped them out on that drive with a pass interference. There's really there hasn't no, been a there hasn't been a scoring drive for St. Xavier that wasn't aided by a turnover or penalty. Correct. And everybody talks about oh what adjustments are you gonna make at halftime? There really is no, no. adjustment you can make because it's been what? The turnovers and the penalties. Your game plan is good. I agree. I'm going to wait for the Cougar special teams to get out here and kick this one off. It'll be Alexis Jackson back to return, and the jersey's all crunched up, but I believe that's Jarrell Williams standing next to him. Yep, number four. There we go. We're getting down here at Memorial Stadium. We're in pink for... Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There you go, ladies. Have some fun. What cold weather, right, Coach? Just an I, excuse. I don't know if I do the swim move or the, whatever they're doing here, <laughs> yeah. but. Yeah, now they say, hey, how you doing, ladies? 
<laughs> All right, finally ready to go here. And a short kick. It'll be right to Williams at the 15 yard line. See if we can make a play. Decent return here for St. Francis up to the 39 with 24 seconds to go. And we're going to have a penalty down here, aren't we? Face mask? No? Not going to not gonna call that? All right. No, you still have good enough field position. You still got your timeouts. You got two timeouts. Yep. And let's see at the end of the play if there's any inadvertent contact with that face mask. I saw it was actually downfield a little <clears throat> more, but no. Not there. Some extracurricular activity away from the play. First down and 10, couple seconds to go. 24 seconds, couple timeouts for St. Francis. They're at their own 40. A couple quick hitters here. And line up in the I formation. Blitz shown by St. Xavier. They will bring two. They're going to run it. Barber in up to the 44, a gain of four. Looks like they're content to let this tick off. Well, I'd try Hail Mary, at least try to draw yeah, the penalty. Yeah, you think, right? But nope, same friend. No, Aaron Ellis wants it. He's not going to get it. That's going to bring us to the end of the first half. It was all St. Francis in the first quarter, and then 27 unanswered by St. Xavier in the second. Turnovers, penalties, the story of this game on both sides of things. We'll see what kind of adjustments Coach Curry and company can make, and Coach Feminist on the other side as well. Again, your halftime score, 27 to 14. We'll be back with the second half in about 15 minutes on the USF Sports TV Network. We're the athletes at the University of St. Francis, and we believe that it's on us all of us to stop sexual assault. It's on us. Está en nosotros. It's on us. 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 It's on us to stop sexual assault, to get in the way before it happens, to get them home safe. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us to not use language that demeans anyone and to not blame the victim. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us to look out for each other, to not look the other way. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us to stand up, to step in, to take responsibility. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us, all of us, to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org.
back here to Joliet Memorial Stadium. It's halftime, 27-14, 27 unanswered points from St. Xavier. And the numbers kind of hash things out here, Coach. It's all about turnovers. It's all about penalties and third down conversions. It is about penalties and third down conversions. First down wise, St. X 13, St. Francis 8. Uh, the Cougars rushed the ball for 51 yards in the first half. St. Francis actually ran the ball for 65 yards, but we only have 59 yards passing in the first half. St. Xavier has 171. Uh, Barbara and our leading rusher, six carries for 28 yards. Aaron Ellis, nine carries, most of them running out of from sack situations, 24 yards. Michael Johnson, six <laughs> carries for 13. Aaron Ellis in the first half, four out of 10, passing for 59 yards and one touchdown. Receiving, not too much from the receivers. Brandon Ruffin has two catches for 51 yards. Jalen Moore has a catch for four yards. Also, Ray Velo with a catch for four yards. <clears throat> it's really the turnovers, if you take a look at that. Also, conversion rate, we were 0 for 5 on third downs. Red zone scoring Ugh. chances, we talked about that in the pregame. Uh, that's a bugaboo uh, for St. Francis. St. Xavier had the ball four times in the red zone, scored all four times they had the ball in the red zone. So what kind of adjustments are you making? I, I know we talked about just before that first half ended that the schemes seem to be doing okay, but it's just, it's the big mistakes. It's the penalties. Well, I, I, the, you know what, we talked about that. We saw the <coughs> St. Francis actually came out here with about over four and a half minutes left to go in uh, halftime. <coughs> Excuse me. So I don't think there's any halftime adjustments made. I, I think it's just more of a hey, we got to play better. We're killing ourselves. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. Why? Because of the turnovers. Because of the penalties. That's not how we've been playing the last three weeks. So I don't think there's any halftime adjustments. Coach Curry's kind of walking by himself. Kind of I don't know uh, if he's trying to cool down or what was said in the <laughs> locker room. But you know I don't I don't think there's any adjustments that need to be made other than the fact that let's take care of the ball a little bit better. Let's start making the, you know, the dumb penalties. <clears throat> Both sides, you know, this this game officiating wise, kind of poor in my judgment uh, because because you know it's a rivalry game. You know it's going to be intense. You know there's going to be a lot of emotions. And St. Xavier had a guy thrown out after a second unsportsmanlike, you know, conduct penalty. But there's been a lot of chippy after the play kind of penalties which you don't usually see. Yeah, that's unfortunate because it was one of their big time players, Josh Hediger, uh, who was the one ejected. And uh, we don't think it was necessarily for actions more than it was for words, just because of the reaction that we saw from the, uh, the official who was uh, near that play. But either case, it's got to play on. It's, it's going to bode well for St. Francis. You just got to take advantage. I think that play actually was huge for St. Xavier. I think it's, it, it, it lit some kind of a fire, and, uh, and they played lights out ever since that happened. So I think they used that adversary, uh, uh, used that to their advantage, I think. Well, they did, and it's kind of like a baseball game where you got to lead. You know, how does the other team get back in the ball game? Usually you walk somebody or you make some errors. That's how they get back. Same in a football game. How does a team get back in the football game? It's usually turnovers and penalties. St. Francis will get it here to start our second half. They'll go into the whatever breeze we have uh, remaining here. Actually, it looked like the wind shifted a little bit. Might be going uh, left to right now across the screen. It did. Uh, it is blowing hard enough to blow that ball off the tee, though. Although that tee doesn't really hold on to that football very tight. There's the flags you see, gentle breeze here, but it is very cold outside. I imagine still in the very low 40s here in Joliet. You now we have some folks listening from across the country. I was checking out our Facebook Live video. You can watch it on Facebook Live, by the way. I think I saw some San Diego out there. Hope they, uh, you're enjoying that warm weather because it's cold in, here in Chicago. Back underway, a short kick by Motti running up to make the play. Ruffin in to return the kick, but not a lot of room for him. He is tracked down at the 31-yard line by Esau Hemphill, the senior. I'd like to see the passing game get established here in the first drive here <clears> in the second half. At least get Ellis into some kind of rhythm. He hasn't really had a lot of time to throw when he drops back. Aaron Ellis and company back on the field. The tailback's going to be Mike Johnson. Lexus Jackson will be wide right. Ruffin and Velo off to the left side. Tight end on the right. On the left, I should say. There's the snap, the turn, and the give. They're going to start off the half with a run by Mike. He'll take it up to the 31-yard line and pick up about four. Keep running the football like that. That'll be all right. 
And I think that's what Coach Curry said. It's not anything that we're doing offensively, defensively, just cut out the turnovers and the penalties. Number 16, Aaron Ellis. Here's Mike Johnson, JCA product. Been wearing the brown here at Memorial Stadium for six years now. Blitz being shown by St. Xavier. They're going to bring it from the outside. Throwing is Ellis and incomplete right through Ruffin's hands. That's a dangerous play. And, that, and that's the kind of thing you just get a vibe after plays like that, after drop passes like well, you, you got to light something up under you. You, know, you need a spark. Yep. I understand that. But you don't want to sit there and, and let your body language dictate your play, so to speak. It's third down now and seven for St. Francis here. First possession of the second half. They're going to rush four. Ellis stepping up, firing right side. Lexus Jackson with the catch at the 39. That should be enough for a St. first down, but he did go backward and try to make a move. Let's see if they give him forward oh, progress. Oh, looks like it's, looks like they, they will. Looks like they're actually kind of hedging their bets, kind of in between where he caught it. <laughs> It'll be enough. Yeah, you're right. 39 yard line. They did give him that forward progress. So first down for St. Francis. Two wide left, one right here with the ball in the right hash for St. Francis. Aaron Ellis, the quarterback, takes a snap, the turn, and gives to Johnson. He is hit at the line, and down he goes. It's Rudy Antunia, the defensive tackle. Big senior out of Crete Money. Second a, down, no game. Does a nice job closing this hole. Watch this. He just closes it from the inside out. Bear hug of a tackle. You don't know, really see a number 19 as a defensive lineman, do you? No, not, you not very say, often. Say Xavier, you got Jesse Gonzalez. He wears number 19. I'm guessing he started at a different position when he got it <laughs> at St. X. Ellis, pressure, steps up. Nice find, hands below, turns up field. See if he can make a play, and he stepped out of bounds. At the 46, 47 yard line, so 46. So they give him seven yards in the play. Second down and three. They need to get to the 49 for a first. Nice little check down. Ellis flushed out of the pocket. Being safe. Checks it down. Little crossing route. Below just steps out right there. Referee all over that one. Third down and three. Again, another third down here. Second one of the drive. Blitz showing up the middle. St. Xavier bringing it. Delayed blitz as well. Firing. And this one's complete to Ruffin. Go, go, go. If it's a foot race, he's gone. But they just got him on the shoelaces. A touchdown saving tackle by Tim Walsh. And a big first down for St. Francis inside the 35. We're right at the 36 yard line. Might be the spark we need. He just catches him right there if he doesn't make the oh. arm tackle. It's Katie by the door for a six. Two wide right, one left. Johnson is the tailback in the pistol. Cougars bring four. Across the middle, and Velo dropped that one. He had some room to run if he grabs it. What's going on out there? Well, I think he turned his head up. He, I thought he saw some green grass, and he knew he was going to have a lot of yards after he made that catch. We'll have some, have some time to think about it, too, as he comes off the field. Pattern. Look, he's wide open. Not a great throw, but you got to make that crap. Oh, he would, he would have had enough for the first yeah. down. Same formation, two wide right, one left. Velo is going to... Head over to the sideline. Corners are tight. Safety's back. They're going to run it with Johnson. And, man, Mike just having a tough time finding some room. He picks up three there. Third down and seven. Now, as weird as this might sound, Nick, this, this could be four downs for St. Francis. Sure, that's not weird at all. Absolutely. St. Francis trailing 13. There's Mike Johnson. Running back out of JCA, just a sophomore. There's the snap to Ellis. Looking deep, he's going for the end zone. He has Ruffin. It is caught at the five, diving, and out at the two-yard line, Brandon Ruffin. Wanted the score, didn't get it. There he's at the two. There's a bust of covers because there's no way he's that wide open on the sideline. See somebody slipped or fell. Yep. Got turned the wrong way. Well, it looks like he was closer than that. Ruffin is one touchdown shy of the all-time record, and he was two yards away from tying that record right there on that play. First down and goal at the two for St. Francis. Can they find a running game to punch it in? 
Or do they go to Lexus single coverage? Nope, they're going to try to run it. Johnson, he was tripped right on the toes, and he's going to maybe lose a foot. Still first and goal. Now they do say a loss of a yard. So first down and goal at the three. Now they've got Zlomian in offense yeah. playing a wing. A little fullback. Follow 44. Get into that end zone. Run the football. Motion to the right. They give it to the motion man, and can't get that one. Only a yard for the tight end. Rajon Williams a carry. Tries to run around the right end, and again, another, what, arm tackle around the legs. I'd like to see him go an RPO, run Upset. pass option. That's 89, Malik Roberts. Malik Roberts. All right, third down and goal. Get two yards in the pistol. Ruffin, single coverage outside. They're going to throw it. Outside, it's Alex Zlomi, the catch for the touchdown. Nobody looked at number 44, the fullback. When's the last time you think he scored two touchdowns in the game? Wasn't this season. <laughs> he is another touchdown for Alex Lomi. Nice catch. He's wide open. Now St. Francis right back in his ball game. First touchdown of the season for 44. St. St. Francis, you're right. Extra point puts him within six, 27-21. They needed that. What a way to start the second half. That was a big one. Big drive for St. Francis. Two big plays to Brandon Ruffin. Alex nice. Lomi gets a touchdown. Nice methodical drive, wasn't it, Nick? Absolutely. We, we didn't see any of that in the first half. Consult the record books here. And watch, this is the play that set up the big touchdown, or not, not the big long pass to the left side. And let's see if he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, it might have. But le leads to another scoring drive by the Saints. Look at Zlomi. Yeah, I, I do this all the time. <laughs> I, I, I return the interceptions for touchdowns. I receive touchdowns. I think I can find Alex Zlomi's career numbers here. <laughs> he doesn't have too many touchdowns. That's his first one this year. He caught a two-point conversion. Oh, well, second touchdown. That's right. He scored the defensive touchdown. Yep. It's his first touchdown reception of the game or of the season. Alex Zalomi making a case for player of the game. When you need points, you go to 44, apparently. Wind blew the ball off the tee again. Set it up for here for Luke Nelson. Luke's got to do a better job of getting dressed before the game, though, because he's, we he's wearing the hoodie. Reminds me of the <laughs> Lily kids, you know, when it's cold out. <laughs> well, it's cold out there. He doesn't get to run around too much. The kick. It's going to stay in bounds, thankfully. They flip it back to their return man. And off up the right sideline, wrapped up at the 25, and that's where St. Xavier will start. Alex Zlomi having a game. Well, if they ask Coach today what the point was during halftime. Yep. I, I imagine that we, we talked about it. It can't, can't be much different than stop committing penalties and stop turning over the football. Here's that return again by nice Trey Devereaux. Special teams on the coverage. First down here for Martinez, throwing right side and incomplete, well over the head of Suzuki. Second down. We're 15, Alex Martinez again, going back and forth, trading starts with the junior Justin Hunterford out of Providence Catholic. Hunterford actually started out at North Central College in Naperville, was the starter there. And then they brought in a, a D1 transfer, so he didn't have many opportunities, so he transferred to St. Xavier who all they do is breed quarterbacks. And unfortunately, he's injured today. Here's the throw, and again, well over the head of his receiver. This time, it was Mark Sturbiak. Well, ma'am could turn yep. right on this play for this football game right now, Nick, because what have you done? You would sit there, and you've taken the opening drive. Oh, 
Well, there you go, first down. You've taken the opening drive for a score. Now you've pinned St. X back here. I didn't get a number, we'll see if we can. Oh, well, couldn't see it there. I thought they said number six. That'd be Jamal Stovall, the corner. Well, first down, you, know, you want to see momentum on that play? That gives St. Xavier some life, and they don't need any extra chances, that's for sure. Set up trips off to the left side, one over to the right. Martinez in the gun, takes a snap. Looking left, looking, looking. Plenty of time for Alex. Dodges one tackle, not the second as he's wrapped up and thrown down. First one to make contact was Tariq Thurman. Finishing it off at the end of the play, Dave Sharnot, the freshman nose tackle out of Providence. Nice job of defensive line forcing pressure. He just stepped, stop. Wrapped up. First guy's got to make takeout. Second guy's got to strip. Second and four screen pass. They're all over boy. that one. And wrapping up. And they're going to blow that one dead. Nicely done. Arthur King. He's having a great game at his cornerback spot as well. And you notice that the Cougar offense makes you do what? Defend the whole field. They make you go sideline to sideline. Look at this. is just a nice form tackle. Wrapping up. Stop momentum. Now third and long situation for the Cougars offense. Third and seven back at the 39-yard line for the Cougars. Under 10 minutes to go, third quarter. Martinez in the gun, points over to his right. Here comes the blitz. And he is unblocked. And Nick Reese is there. And down he goes. Nick Reese, his first sack of the season. Well-timed, young man. Forcing a punt unit to come on for St. Xavier. Big play. You want to talk about the momentum shifts? That could be a big one. Nick Reese coming up big. Just pursuit. Secures him, he's got him, trying to get him down, and three other guys right there. A little help from his friend Roger Thigpen at the end. Fourth down, and here comes the punt. You watch the fake here, huh? St. Francis got twin safeties back. They're going to defend the receivers, and they will punt it away. Spiral. Michael Johnson is there to return the punt, but he's chopped down immediately by Dre Devereaux, two offensive players making contact. Top of the hour to you, WCSF Joliet, 88.7. Johnson's the first time I think we've seen him return a punt this year. I don't believe so. St. Francis, 71 rushing yards, 126 through the air, only 197. St. Xavier, only 225 total yards. Running to Perry Barberin. He oh, sneaks through. Look at over. He was tackled by his own guy with a 10-yard carry. That was, <laughs> that was Brendan Mulrow. I don't care who it was. Get out of my way. <laughs> Mulrow made the tackle. Watch big number 60 well, hit it from behind. I'll just run you over, too. <laughs> <laughs> nice run by Barber, and he's been the most effective back so far for the Saints. First down on the 10-yard carry. They're going to give it to the bowling ball again. Nice bounce inside. Still on his feet, pushing forward to the 49. He did lose a fumble back in the first half, so I imagine he will be more cognizant of that. That's a four-yard carry. There's a different tone in the running game when he is running the ball. It just feels different. It just looks different when he's yep. running the, the football. He's going to be fun to watch in his next four years. He's just a freshman out of New Orleans, but he runs with much more maturity. You see him standing next to Aaron Ellis, the transfer quarterback from St. Joe's in Indiana. Snap, throwing. Has the man Ruffin. Here's a flag oh, on the call. play. Ruffin's going to take it up for about 15 yards, but it's probably going to come back. They're going to call holding on us. That's 10 yards, so that's going to make it back to the 40-yard line. Oh, face mask on the Cougars. Are they tacking on at the end? Yep. So that's a 15-yard pass play. Let's see if we see in the middle. Penalty. Oh, right there. We saw it at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, two, ref two of the officials saw that one. As Ruffin takes it up to the, we'll say, 35, so 15 more to the 20. Just like we saw in the first half. Penalties and turnovers. Penalties now, and turnovers. Now it's going back to the Cougar side. Yep, penalties. At the 20-yard line for St. Francis, another gift from the Cougars. Unbelievable the amount of penalties. 
Corners are up, safeties are deep. They're going to run it to Barber. Right up the middle, there goes Perry. Up to the five-yard line, taken down at the four-yard line for Barber in a big run. Hosselton came from behind from his defensive end spot to make the tackle. Look at Barber and the patience. Just shifty, and look at that. He's trying to make, make a move. <laughs> he, he went about four moves and, <laughs> and didn't go anywhere. First and goal for the Saints. Looking to take the lead with a touchdown. A touchdown will tie it. An extra point will give him the lead. Aaron Ellis checking the sideline. Has to hurry under 10 seconds on the play clock. Now they're ready. Two wide outs right, one left. Looking left to Ruffin. Corner route and up and he caught it and touchdown. And he will set the record for most touchdown receptions in a career. Brandon Ruffin. Not only that, it gives them the lead over the number 10 team in the country. Congratulations, number 80. Nice job of securing that catch and getting his feet in bounds in the corner of the end zone. Watch this throw. It's good throw back shoulder. Look, boom, boom. Yep. Tip tap right no, in. No doubt about it. Snap good. Hold down. How about that for halftime adjustments? Two possessions, two <laughs> touchdowns. Unbelievable. I'm telling you what, as God's my witness, there is no halftime adjustments that were made. I believe I, I, I'm, I'm going to guarantee you that. Well, whatever they whatever they couldn't figure out against St. Xavier in the second quarter, they figured out here in the third offensively. Nice job of that big man, Jake McCreary, the center, along with the rest of his offensive line, Mulroe, McCaskill, Bukema, Newman. Coach Curry got to have a smile on his face after these last two drives. Ruffin tying Troy Torrance with 20 career touchdowns. Look to try to break it. Don't forget, Alexis Jackson's only two behind him. There's McCreary, the center, along with Brent Walker, his tight end, number 85. Big men doing some work here in this third quarter. Our last two touchdown drives, had they seemed easy to you? They did. Unusually easy, yes. Effortless. Like they were running their game plan exactly how they wanted to. Under seven minutes to go. It's the Saints by one, 28-27. Turning out to be a shootout here in Joliet. Nelson boots this one. Sidewinder, and uh, it will go out of bounds. And get it at the 35. Come on now, keep it in bounds. Well, that's been their... Their modus operandi for the, the kickoffs, they try to pin yep. him in that left corner every time. He dropped some Latin on us? Well, if that modus operandi, was, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Usually you hear that in detective shows, right? <laughs> I mean, right? It's their M.O., yeah. Oh, they're going to make him re-kick it again, aren't they? A five-yard penalty if they re-kick. Come on now, Luke. That's interesting. They must have some faith in their return men here, huh? Well, all right, remember that. See if they get past the 35 here as they kick it back at the 30-yard line. Are you surprised by that? When you take that? You take it at the 30 35? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. 6.51 remains here in the third quarter. Don't forget if you are out. Listening to this game on WCSF, you can pull us up on your phone. We're broadcasting live on YouTube, broadcasting live on Facebook. Plenty of chances to watch this one. Kickoff all the way back from the five. Here's the return. Devereaux up the middle. Well, he got past the 35 by about a yard or two. Down at the third. Actually, he didn't get to the 35, to the 32-yard line. So St. Francis will take that. Decent crowd coming out here for St. Francis. Not quite the uh, the warm weather homecoming crowd, but hey, what can you expect? It's our first real cold day. Had some snowflakes early around this morning. Some sleet falling. But hey, you know what? A game like this, big game against the Cougars, you're going to come out and watch, huh? You betcha. Or watch online. That's why we're here. Timeout calling by the referee here. And make sure everyone's ready to go. We are. 
Alex Martinez, quarterback for the Cougars in the shotgun. Davis play action. Here comes the pressure. Martinez firing has a man wide open. It's going to probably be a first down there at the 42. Well, maybe a football, a football yeah, length shy. Short. huh? No, oh, come on. I mean, if that's where you're standing, that's not a first down. OK. Second down and a half a yard. Here's Martinez again. A little wobbler out of his hand. Jamari Watson, the running back. They'll give it to him on the counter. Uh, he was hit at the line. I don't think he got it. No, he didn't make it. He's going to be a yard short. Right to the line of scrimmage, so third down and one. The second time they've run that, they ran it on the goal line for a touchdown, cross buck action out of the backfield. Watch, fake jet sweep, handoff, look at pursuit down the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Tariq Thurman. Third down and one. They're just going to run it right at him here, aren't they? You would think. Martinez under center. Quarterback sneak. He dropped it. Ball, Ball's ball, on the ball, ground. Ball. Ball's on the ground. Who came up with it? It's going to be a loss if St. Xavier gets it. It'll be fourth down. I think fourth down. Yep. Arthur King holds up the fist. It's going to be fourth down after the loss on the fumble. Everyone's got butter fingers in this game. They're, gonna, they're not going to punt it, are they? You see, it, it's just a bad center exchange with the quarterback. No. Alexis is on the field. He doesn't realize they're not punting it. He finally runs off. Here we go. Fourth down and one. Fullback in the game. Jet motion. They flip it to Ivlo, and he jets up. We have a flag on the play. He picks up the first down. We'll see what the flag's about. I think it's going to be on the boys in white. Flag in that area usually holding. And an injured Saint, and that is not a good sign. Malik Thurman. <laughs> Penalty is going to be on the Cougars, so they're going to punt it. They got a legal chop block, which means I didn't think, see anything from the outside. But when you're engaged, which means you're fighting off a defender, let's see it right here. Yeah, yeah, he goes right down on the back there. So when you're defending your defensive lineman and you're engaged with offensive lineman, another guy can't come in from the side and block you below the waist. Because that happens. Malik Thurman's going to walk off under his own power. Oh, well, he's important to that squad. 51 tackles coming into today. Number one on the team. Set a career high in tackles in each of the last two games. Had 14 against s and And then last week against Olivet Nazarene, a season high for St. Francis for number 14. He's in on everything. Hopefully that was just a scare there. With the penalty, makes it fourth down and 15. Punt unit on Jackson, and I believe that's Johnson back to return. Barely gets the punt off. It's slow. It'll take a bounce. Will it bounce high? Ew, Don't let pick it, it up. Go, let Get it away. Go. They do. <laughs> okay, Lexus. Whew. Easy on me there, Lex. He's kind of coming off limping. Uh, that left, hopefully it's just a cramp there. Your rule of thumb is return guy. If it bounces, number one, you're supposed to get away for it. But if it bounces in front of you and the ball goes over your head, all right, that means it's not going uh -huh. right or left. So then you can field it. Yeah, that took a low bounce. So Lexus made the right call on that. Four and a half minutes to go. The Saints get the ball back here with the lead. Barbarin, hof uh, hopefully, but I think he's going to be the running back here on out until he does something to... to to necessitate him going out because he's been the most effective running back and he's going to do it again here. Nice jump stop. Skips up to the 30 yard line. He'll pick up at least five on that play. Second down. He makes his own space. And what I mean by that, he's not going to make a move in the hole. He's going to get to the point of attack and then make his own space. Perry Barber in the freshman out of New Orleans. They give it to him, but ran into his offensive line. No room to go there. He's going to go backward three or four yards. Third down and nine now. Third down and eight. 
He just had nowhere to go. Penetration by the D line for St. Xavier. Backside pursuit gets him. Snap back to Ellis. Looking long for Ruff, and he's behind the D, but he overthrew him. Incomplete fourth down. Three and out here for St. Francis. Right, Reed just overshot him. He has a step on the defender. Boy, he just throws a nice ball. Look at it. Right, Reed. <laughs> step behind the defender. Laid up where only he can catch it. Luke Nelson trotting on for St. Francis. 322 left to go here in the third. St. Francis has not played a game that ended with the point spread being under 10 points. Whether they've won or lost, it's been more than 10. We've got a one-point game here today. Nearly blocked again. How did he get that ball off? And he touched oh! it. Ball's on the ground. St. Xavier will jump on it. That a dangerous play by Suzuki. Unbelievable play. What are you thinking? You're thinking you can make a play. Oh. That's why players do this. I don't think he knew that that guy was right there. Great stick on that play for St. Francis by Rio Strama, the freshman out of JCA. Well timed, but St. Xavier lucky to jump on that one. They'll have it at their own 21 first down. St. Francis has the momentum right here, folks. But St. Xavier's pretty good, too. <laughs> they can score in a hurry. They're going to rush three. Pressure, pressure. Going long down the middle of the field. Double coverage and batted away. Nice play. Nicely done. Malik Thurman was there, but knocking it away was Cody Renda. A linebacker going back in coverage. But he's in trail position. Watching get his inside arm up at the last minute and bat this ball away. Pretty nice pass here by Martinez. Watch him inside arm right there. Gets it up. Bats it away. Malik Thurman, Cody Randa on the coverage. Second down. I think Xavier's going for the score. There's 36. Linebackers stepping up into the gaps. St. Francis got six guys. Corners are back. Safeties are deep. Blitz shown. Blitz comes. Screen pass incomplete. Causing some... Causing some disturbance there in that in that backfield, that St. Francis D. Third down and ten at the 21 yard line. Martinez looks off to the side. Boy, their slot receiver on top side's got a 14 yard cushion. <laughs> Throwing, short pass, caught, looking for a block. He dives up to the 29, balls on the ground. And they're going to say he was down at the 29-yard line, but that's going to bring up fourth down and three. And Hurts on the play is Dre Devereaux. And we just talked about that. They, he had a lot of cushion. This is the slot receiver getting the ball. Let's see if he was down. Yep, elbow was on the ground. That's a good call. I agree. I thought he was down by the naked eye. They put it at the 30-yard line, so fourth and one. Oh, they're going to go for it again. No, they're going right? to line up in form formation and then they're going to punt. Yeah. Going to punt. St. Xavier just two for 10 on third down. And they came in 40%, I yep. believe, on third downs. St. Francis is four out of 10. They improved ever since their 0-5 on first down, or third down start. Folks bundled up here at Memorial Stadium and join a, a fantastic NAIA matchup here in the MSFA Midwest. This one will determine who's got the inside track to the playoffs. Now they've shown this in the first half too where they lined up, yep. then they punted and they had the, the punt man back. So St. Francis just burned a timeout. So what if you don't have a return guy back there, right? Mm -hmm. you, you cover to make sure they punt it. All right. Yep. Nothing bad can come from them kicking that off and you not being back there. Unless they get a heck of a roll, but this field position, I'll take my chances on that. 
They will send Mike Johnson back as the safety to return any potential kick. But it's fourth and one. I wouldn't I would expect them to go for it. And if they punt it, great. They rush up to the line. It's a big formation here. They will run it. Quarterback keeper, Nick Reese is there. Oh. Alex Lomi is there. And they turn him away. The Saints take it over at the 26-yard line. A busted play. The halfback did not get the call. You don't see it after a timeout. Because Martinez was, it looks like it was going to be a jet sweep action. Watch this. He went, he went under the yeah. quarterback <laughs> instead of in front of him. He's Martin Martinez in no man's land. Zlomi trying to rip that ball out. Momentum squarely with the Saints. There's Alex Zlomi having a fantastic ball game. Two touchdowns, one defensively and one offensively. Handshakes and, and head taps all around for that defense. Look at the big here by Nick Reese. It's a big play to go with it. Two big plays by Nick today. First and 10 for... Aaron Ellis and company, they're going to put three running backs back there, and a timeout is called. Oh, St. Francis oh, calling a timeout. Oh, no. no. Oh. Oh, two timeouts in a row here in the f going into the fourth quarter. Oh, no. What happened? Did a player call a timeout inadvertently? Something must have happened because I don't think the, the coaching staff on the side would call that timeout. Now you just burned through two, so you have one timeout left. Coach Curry in year number six of his tenure, 33 and 29. He's the MSFA coach of the year a few years ago in 2015. Here comes the offense. One timeout remaining and over a quarter to go in a one point game. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite you. Rajon Williams back there at a fullback spot along with Jordan Smith. Mike Johnson, the tailback. Two wideouts as Williams goes in motion to the left end. Play action. Ellis to throw. He's got him in the end zone. Down to Ruffin. A overshot him in the end zone. Was a sure touchdown if it was on the money. But I like what St. Francis did there because they have a history this whole season. Oh. As soon as they get a turnover and the other team's plus territory, they, they go for it all. And look at this. He's beat him. He's a step behind him. Actually, two steps, just a little long. <sighs> two big plays like that. Ellis has overshot his man. Two short touchdowns. Second down and 10 at the 29-yard line. This is dangerous territory. For that St. Francis offense, they can score from here. They hand it off to Johnson. He's finally got a hole. Oh, run me over. Shoulder down, and he picks up eight and a half up to the 20 yard line. Nice run there by Mike. He says, Pierre doing it. He says, I can do this too. Watch yeah. this run. Watch this. Boom. Send Lexus and Ravelo off to the right. Zach Marino into the left. Ruffing going to get a breather here. Mike Johnson, the tailback in the pistol. Third down and one. Blitz shown. St. Xavier bringing pressure. To give to Mike again. Looking for a hole. He's not there. Spun down to the ground by Dimitri Joe, the junior defensive end from Nazareth. Eight and a half tackles for a loss this year. Well, if you ran that play, it leads me to believe that you're going to bring Barbarin back in. Well, Mike Johnson's still in there. Now it's going to be fourth down and three, and they're going to go for it here instead of trust the leg of Grayson Barnett. Hands to the sky there for Ellis. Ten seconds on the play clock. Two by two formation. Ellis throwing, and it is incomplete. Defended beautifully. On the play by Robbie oh, Brindley. Oh, I didn't call it an interception. Oh, you're kidding me. They didn't blow the whistle. Well, they take it in for the score, allegedly. Well, we're going to have to have a talk about this. He didn't make it. Was bad, I mean, it was batted down. There was no way. I mean, that was batted down. There's, let's, we got a replay here. Come on, guys. Come on. Down. 
Oh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if he'll bounce off his leg because nobody made a call. You can't really see what that bounced off of, to be honest. It looked like it bounced off the leg. You can't see behind there. Yeah, yeah but I think it, nobody called anything. That that ball bounced off the ground. Looked like. Yeah, you, you, you because, can't see because, on our because replay. Because if, if it hits your leg, it's not going to bounce that high up. Yeah, nobody you, well, made a call. That, nobody made what? They're, running. They're going to let this stand because nobody, nobody. Well, number yeah. one, nobody called it incomplete. Number yeah. two, nobody ran the other way with the defender. So they, they, they thought the play was dead. Nobody made a call. Did you see a, a beanbag come out? Nope. Well, they do say incomplete pass. What's going on, guys? Come on. Come on now. You have to make some kind of call. Come That's on, a, guys. You, if that was a good interception, then the back judge would have started running down the sideline along with the side yep. judge. There would have been a beanbag or Every something. Every official stood in their spot and did not move. That's a, that's the, I mean, that's the best point to be made right here. I mean, nobody did anything. <laughs> I mean, let's see. Now, no, no, here's my point. Watch. Yeah. Boom. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, even the defense so, defenders, the defenders knew it was on the ground. 33 was looking right at they it. Said it incomplete. The yeah, I mean, that's an incomplete pass. I mean, come on, boys. All right, here we go. First and 10 for St. Xavier after that craziness. Snap back to L or Martinez. Right side, it's caught, but hit immediately nice is Suzuki. Nice play, Kerjelic. That ball came loose. <laughs> and now St. Francis is going to run it into the end zone. Jamal Stovall will do the honors that time, seeing if he can get a benefit of the doubt. No such luck that time. Well, this ball was definitely down by Yeah, Dante. of course it was. <laughs> it was, right? Yeah, right okay. there. Yeah. <laughs> Second down after the gain of four. Martinez steps up. He's past the line, has to keep it upended. Ooh, dangerous plays. He's chopped down at the 25. Was that Stovall again? This is going to be a very interesting fourth quarter to say. <laughs> yeah, that's going to bring us down to the end of the third. We have ourselves a heavyweight bout right now. 28-27 Saints. We go into the fourth quarter. Whoever wins this quarter has the inside track to a conference championship and potentially a playoff berth. We'll find out what happens here. I am more than excited. It's going to be third down for St. Xavier. It's our conference meet, so it's kind of our biggest meet of the year. Sharon was a Lindsey Wilson runner. We've known each other for a long time, and she is a sweetheart. She's absolutely adorable. You would never want anything bad to happen to her in a race, ever. And we were two and a half miles into it, and Darcy and I were in second and third, and Sharon was in first. We knew that she had gone the wrong way, because we could barely still see her. She was still pretty far in front of us. She still came in third place at the finish, but I came in first and Danielle came in second. Immediately, we just go, no! <laughs> we just, like, both literally did this motion with our and arms. We didn't want the credit for first and second because we knew that's not what it really was. Well, I'm very proud of our girls. You know, you, could, you can't help but be proud. Anytime someone does the right thing. No Going to cut that a little bit short. We don't want to miss a second here. It's third down and six for St. Xavier as we flip sides of the field. Low snap, but Martinez picks it up. Nothing short. going that time. It is going to be short. Yep, fourth down coming up for the Cougars. The defense for St. Francis has been outstanding. Tariq Thurman again. What is that third quarter look like third quarter third down convergence st francis improved four out of 11 st francis with 109 yards rushing 147 passing for 256 yards total offense actually about gain st xavier 256 to 235 fourth down they're going to line up but you expect this pooch kick nope they're going to go for it they're throwing on fourth down deep in their own territory it is caught and a first down is made by St. Xavier what a gutsy play Strib Strubiak the senior with the catch you snap wow. it the up back you run an out route and he catches it this is a gutsy call that's a oh my god watch him put it right on the money <laughs> wow foot either side that's incomplete how do you call that Deep in your own territory. Here's the give to Mike Ivlo. 
Not a lot of room that time for the Bolingbrook product, son of John Ivlo, former NFLer, current Bolingbrook High School head coach. No gain on that play. To make the playoffs, you have to not only win your conference, but be rated in the top 20. Blitz by St. Francis. They will throw. They have a man down the seam. It is incomplete. Alex Martinez missed a touchdown by a yard or two on that play. Wow. And he knows it because he put his head over his oh. knees and he said, I missed him. He did. It was. They faked a little pitch action. Watch this fake. Hold the safety a little bit. And just maybe what? A yard. Suzuki that yard. close. Third and ten again, but apparently it's four down territory wherever they are. Safety's come up a bit. St. Uh, Francis is going to show blitz here. Snap to Martinez, looking for the quick throw. They have Suzuki on the slant, and he spins his way to a first down, a pickup of 12. Up to the 47-yard line, St. Xavier moving the chains. That's about the third time today that he's got the ball spun and got enough for a first down. Watch him finish this. Gets it. Watch him turn, put the head down, and spin and get enough for the first down. Hand signals by Martinez here on first down. Again, blitz being shown by St. Francis. Again, they bring it. Screen pass to Suzuki this time. He is brought down after a gain of six yards. On the play again for St. Francis making the stop was Tariq Thurman again. He had five catches for 46 yards through three quarters. And now you're going five, six yards a pop on the quick passing play. Second down and four. Clock stopped again. I believe we have an injured player on the field. Suzuki, a little bit ginger getting up. Number 11, Nick Suzuki, a sophomore out of Oak Forest High School. 33 catches, 558, five touchdowns coming into the game today. And players are going to come off the field. Did we get a call timeout? Didn't come off the board. Nope. Okay. Did you hear a whistle? Official, no, I did not. Officials <laughs> conference. 25th year of football for St. Uh, Xavier. Feminist been there for 19 years. They've only won eight games before Mike Feminist took over. Since then, he's gone 162 and 61. That's pretty good. <laughs> with, a, with a national championship back in 2011. That is phenomenal. One of the best run programs in the country. There's great people over there, great football players. They do it right. St. Francis looking for one of the biggest wins in their football program's history. Knocking off St. Xavier today, but then you have to go and, and win your next two at Robert Morris, which is in a cupcake, and then Trinity International as well to make this game worth it, assuming you come out with a victory, which is a big assumption right now. Second down and four here for St. Xavier. Start winding that clock. Cougar is going to look off to the side. All right, Martinez ready. Ivlo left hip, two wide outs on each side. Here's Martinez, five-step drop, pressure, throwing out, and it is complete. And out of bounds at the 38-yard line, another first down, Dre Devereaux this time. They're killing him on the out and ups. The uh, up and outs, I should say. But watch where he puts his ball, Nick. He puts it right where only his guy can catch it in stride just past the first down marker. Easy. If your guy is the only one that's there. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a false start. They blew it dead. First and 10 turns into first and 15. Back to the 44 or 43 yard line. Every yard you feel is huge here. Two by two here for Martinez. Left hash. First and 15, they need to get to the 28 for a first down. Snap to Martinez. 
Pressure up the middle, checks it down. It is complete to nice Ivo and a shoestring tackle at the 40. Only a gain of three, and that's a fantastic tackle by Cody Randa. The sophomore out of Sandwich. Whole Sandwich contingent is here. Couple high school uh, ball players from Sandwich High in attendance today as well. Second down and 12 at the 40. Martinez throwing again. Pressure, fires across his body and complete to Suzuki again. Inside the 35, he picks up six, makes it a third and manageable. And that was as he was being hit, coach. It might be almost time to start doubling him. I'm talking about Suzuki yeah. because, boy, he's, he's throwing just, darts right now. He's making every catch. And Martinez on the money every time. Third down. Here we go. Motion to the backfield. Play action. Oh, get him. Just missed down the field, and it is complete, incomplete. He could not hold on. Going to the ground, Mark Sterbiak. Oh, a big drop brings up fourth and five. Delay They're going to go for blitz. it. Let's look coming right up the middle here. Oh, just couldn't get him in. Look at this ball wobbles a little bit. Had it, had tough, it, yeah. had it, and popped right out. It's a tough out. catch. Would have been a tough catch. Fourth down and five. Big play. Biggest play of the game so far right here. St. Francis going to bring some pressure. Can Martinez make the play? They're going to shift Ivo to the left for protection. Sending four receivers out. Picks up the blitz. Martinez throwing, has a man caught first down. First down up to the 23. Antonio Lemon couldn't keep him in front of him. And they find Harold Davis, the JCA product, playing against a lot of his old buddies here tonight. Makes a big play. First down and St. Xavier just marching. Bringing the blitz again. Screen pass out again. And out of bounds at the 15-yard line, a pickup of eight on that play. This time it was Elliot Pipkin, the Oswego product. 11-10 to go. We got a long way. This is forever. It's a two-minute offense to run it. Snap to Martinez. Flip to Ivlo. He'll turn the corner past the 10-yard line. And the ball's loose. St. Francis says they got it. But the officials say down inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal. Let's check it out again. Well, I don't know if that ball ever went out of bounds. Uh, it looked like he was down. Well, somebody threw a bean bag. Oh, they did. They did throw a bean bag. And Nick Reese is down on the field. He's looks like he's in some pain. The training staff going to rush out and. He was, Take a look at him. he was standing up, and then he just went to the ground. Well, don't we have a reverse angle? Don't we have uh, opposite cameras on the other side of the field, too? What's going on out here? Can we go uh, 360 on this one? <laughs> Here's Nick. I, I think it was Nick Reese there. Let's see if we can pick it up again. I really didn't even see it come out at the end, to be honest. News flash. Yep, it's Nick, but he's going to run off under his own power. So it's going to be first down and goal for St. Xavier. Hopefully, the, I don't know if Nick may have even done that on purpose, just to slow the slow that, some things down be, here. That, I mean, that, 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 <laughs> that is taught. Uh huh. St. Xavier was just marching with that no huddle. That's, you know, maybe slowed the momentum down a bit. Kind of like stepping out of the box in baseball. Here we go. Two by two. Left hash for Martinez. Pitching it over to Ivalo again. Here comes the troops. He makes one miss, but not the second, but he still picks up about four to the five-yard line. He might have picked up five to the four-yard line. That's just a read by the quarterback. If he sees that they had them outflanked, there's no outside defender, he'll just pitch that ball. Ivalo averaging 8.2 yards per carry this season. For a second and goal to Ivlo again, spinning inside, but he's stuck there. He'll maybe get a yard. Third down and goal at the three-yard line for the Cougars. Ten and a half to go in the game. It's St. Francis by one, 
Mason DeLong making the stop. Two wideouts left, two to the right. Single coverage. Blitz being shown. They bring some pressure. Throwing to the corner and incomplete. It was right into the hands of Sturbiak, but he could not make the play. Antonio Lemon, I feel, got lucky on that play. He did. They've been picking on him on the other side. Uh -huh. And look at his ball. Wow, that was right perfect. Here. Yeah, right in the hand. Oh, that's oh he just, just went right through his hands. Don't, so, don't show Sturbiak that play ever again. And now they're going to bring the field goal unit on because yep, if they the kick it, convert it, they'll take the lead. That's a big drop. That's a huge drop. Watch out. This is an extra point, essentially, for the place kicker, Abdul Mahdi. He's 29 out of 30 on extra points. Well, that one looks pretty good, and it is. So, a great drive by St. Xavier, but they come up empty on the touchdown. They put up a field goal and take a two-point lead, coach. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those games. It's, 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 it's a no-rhythm game. It's one of those no-rhythm games where you, you yep. can't feel anything. St. Francis comes out here and scores on the first two possessions. And, oh, my goodness. Will it come down to the leg of Grayson Barnett? We are only trailing by two, St. Francis is. It's 38-28, but we got a long way to go. We got at least two more possessions for each squad here, I think. You would think. Thank you. 19 plays, 76 yards, five minutes and 47 seconds, and they come up with three. That's a victory for St. Francis, I think. That's a good job by a defense, not yeah. let them get in, into the end zone. I'm, I'm telling you what, though, I'm going back to Pierre yeah. com coming out of this series. One hundred and sixty seven yards of penalties in this game. St. Xavier has eight penalties for ninety four yards. St. Francis has eight penalties for seventy three yards. Relatively even. <laughs> But a lot of flags, a lot of big penalties. Could use a big kickoff return here. Yeah, let's get some good field position. Deep kickoff. It will be Williams. Nope, it'll be Jackson from the seven yard line. Upfield on the sideline, looking for a cutback. Not there, but good field position. That'll do up to the 41-yard line. How does he do it? It doesn't even look like he's running fast. Some good, great blocking out there, special teams-wise, for St. Francis. And again, he just takes it up to the right side. Doesn't cut it across. When he sees a little hole down the sideline, he'll take it up. The buzzards are circling above Memorial Stadium here. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Looks rather ominous on this Halloween weekend, though. Two wideouts on each side for Aaron Ellis. They play action. They give it to Barber, and there was no room, no gain that time for Perry Barber. Happy Halloween, everybody. Buzzard circling. One two-point lead now for St. Xavier. It's gone back and forth. The lead has changed hands a few times in this game. Same formation, but looks like Jordan Smith into the game now at running back. Ellis, Ellis rolling right, has some room, firing on the run. It is complete to Marino at the 40. I don't know if that pass was intended <laughs> for him. I think it was. It was intended for Marino, but uh, almost undercut by uh, Velo, that's a 20 yard strike for a first down for St. Francis from one 40 yard line to the other. The clock winding. I thought he went out of bounds though. No, he tiptoed. Yeah, he did. But he went out of bounds, so I thought the clock should have stopped. I don't know. First down and 10 for St. Francis. <clears throat> Ellis, pressure, steps up. How did he get out of that? He's on the run. He slides down at the 36-yard line. He only picks up 
We'll give him three or four on the play. We'll give him four. Yep, up to the 36. Well, that's okay. That's a yep. positive play. Sure. Smart guy. He, I mean, there's been some quarterbacks for St. Francis that will try to turn that run into a touchdown. He's not that guy. He, he knows who he is. Safety's deep. Corners off their men. Two receivers each side here for Ellis. Play action. Pump fakes. And how quick did they get to the quarterback on that play? Joe Casenza, the junior, was there in an instant. The loss goes for six on the sack. Boy, he closed it down. He jumped up, so he a passing lane. Now it's third down and 12. Second and six to third and 12. Big difference there. Here's Ellis in the gun again. Three steps, steps up. Fires has Ruffin to his knees to make the grab, but he's well shy of the first down. Let's it's going to be it's, it's, it's going to be at the 29. Well, maybe it's not well shy, about a yard shy. So fourth down and one. I don't know if I trust the running game here, coach. Not the pistol running game anyway. The offensive line wants to go for it, that's for sure. They will go fourth down and one. Try to hard count. Ooh, they had him jumped, but they did not go off sides. Seven minutes to go. It's fourth and one. Big play here for Ellis. They're going to throw it. Fires open. has his man. It is caught for a first down by Lexus at the 25. A huge fourth down conversion for the Saints. Field goal territory here. Well, it's just an all, all hook route where you just go two yards past the first down, the first down marker to make the, the catch. First down, 26-yard line for the Saints. They trail by two, 6.38 to go. Running, no play action ball was tipped and incomplete. Looking for Lexus, but tipped at the line. I believe it was their all-star middle linebacker, Danny Sirocco, the two-time defensive player of the week in the conference. He has been all over the field today. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know, given the the wind conditions and how close his range is today against that win, when he needs to have a reasonable shot of field goal. Second down and 10. Here is Ellis stepping up, firing into the end zone, and he, he tried to throw that one away or tried to drop it into Ray Velo. I'm not exactly sure what the idea on that well, was. He had trips to the top of the screen and I thought if he stepped up look he had trips I thought if he steps up and he just takes this ball right yep, I thought now, he'd, I thought he'd run it yeah he had a, a running lane there well now it's third and long so if they set up for a field goal here 26 36 you're looking at a 45 yard field goal maybe a little longer than that blitz shown by the Cougars they bring some extra men Ellis stepping up, fires, but he was hit as he's thrown, incomplete. Now it's decision time. How much do you trust the field goal game here? Well, he's definitely got the leg for it. Yep. Here we go. Grayson Barnett to take the lead. Grayson is only three for 10 this year. He's made one from 25, 26, and 30. He's missed from 26, 34, 35, and 43. Give me 43. <sighs> Big kick, none bigger for Grayson Barnett than right now. Just another day at the park, young man. It's blocked. Blocked by the Cougars and down at the 36. He kicked it too low or just got blocked off the edge. But a lot of times when you go for a longer field goal or a long field goal against the win, you have to get a lower trajectory on it. And we'll see it right here. And it looks like it gets, no, nope, right up the middle. So St. Francis has 619 left and one timeout. That's the best thing about that play is how much time is remaining. 
619, so odds are they'll get another opportunity at it. They trail by two. St. Xavier in protect mode here. First down. They run it to Ivlo. Breaks one tackle, but not the second. Minimal gain, only two or three yards to be had there. Well, I'm guessing that the ball is going to stay in number four's yep, hands here. Yep, yep, yep. They haven't been able to stop him the last drive. They went 19 plays and 76 yards in almost six minutes. That's running the football. They're going to throw it. Martinez, five-step drop, looking deep, nothing there. Fires to his second receiver. It is complete. And a first down up to the 43. And what that first down has just done is flip the field. So we, even if you don't get another first down, you can punt and pin St. Francis back. That's a deflating blocked kick right there, isn't it? That sucks some of the energy right out of that stadium. It's first down right now for Martinez and the Cougars. Motion left side to the jet sweep. Nope, play action. Now they will throw it over to the jet man motion. He's got all the room in the world to run up the left sideline inside the 25. It's a pickup of almost 20 yards up to the 25-yard line. That's a great play design because once you fake the jet sweep and you pull it back, everybody forgets about what? The fake man. So he just continues down the left sideline. Watch. Everybody forget about him. Now he looks him off, and now there's nobody over Defense needs to step up one more time. St. Fran or St. Xavier rather in no hurry here as we take under five minutes to go. It's 30 to 28 Cougars. Snap to Martinez, screen pass and incomplete. That was a dangerous play as they looked over to the left side for Elliot Pipkin. It's a nice safe pass, he just drops it, but if you're right now milking clock and you took the play clock all the way down to two seconds, why on earth would you throw the football? Second down, St. Francis showing blitz, they back off, they run it, but a flag comes in. It's gonna be a penalty on St. Xavier. Get the official call from our ref. Oh. Big penalty that time by Harold Davis, the JCA product. Official Jeff Otterby, our referee. Makes it second and 15. Back to the 29 yard line for the Cougars. Motion again, play action. Martinez, screen pass is picked it. off. St. Francis, the interception. The oh, don't get a penalty, Zlomi, up to the 36 yard line. Making the huge play for St. Francis, Roger Thigpen, his first pick of the year. He read that all day. You wanted a spark, St. Francis fans, you got one from Thigpen. It was screen was yelled from the stands and look at him undercut it, undercut Ivlo and make that pick. Oh, oh Zlomi could have easily been flagged for that, for that hit, easily. But here come the Saints offense. Four and a half minutes to go. They have it at the Cougar 46. Here we go. Keep an eye on Brandon Ruffin. They're giving him seven yard cushion on the left side. They're gonna run it to Barberin. Inside run as he stumbles for four. Second and six. Good run that time by Perry. And I said again, I like it when he runs the football. Yep. There's a different tone to the running game. Look, he'll get hit right there one yard, but he bounces and gets another three. Second and six, hold on to the football. Again, huge cushion on the outside for Ruffin. Not so much for Lexus. They're looking his way, crossing route. They Ruffin has it at the 35, and that's a first down for the Saints. Oh, they're gonna say he dropped it. Oh, my Lord. 
I didn't see incomplete on that. Down. He's got it. Ball's bobbling. That's good. Can't see. Can't see if he secured the catch. Man, that's tough. That is tough. <sighs> I guess you, you can't say the, the Saints are getting all the calls. Third down and six now. All right. Look at the cushion on Ruffin right now. Ellis looking deep right side, looking for Lexus, and it's incomplete. Could have been picked off. But now it's fourth down. Decision time. What do you think? Oh, you got to go for it. With 3.50 to go. Go to your... Go to your one play. What's your 10-yard play? Well, if I'm getting a cushion, it's got to be a side adjustment. I may yep. agree to him. Ruffin on the outside. Velo in the slot left. Lexus wide right. Ton of room there for Brendan Ruffin. He's asking for some safety help as well. Fourth down. Here we go. Blitz is coming from the Cougars. Pass right side. It He's is got caught. It. He's got First it. down for He's the Cougars. He's got it. Lexus Jackson. The ball popped out there at the end. Cougars want an incomplete pass, but I think the ground caused that ball to pop out. It's a first down to the 35. Big play Just by a big time playmaker. Pass. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, it came out there at the end. That's a completed pass. First down, a big play by Lexus. 3.43, clock ticking. They will run it to Barberin between the tackles, spinning, spinning up to the 30, the 26 yard line. I a nine like yard it. carry. I don't like it. I'm sorry, Nick. I don't like it when he spins. That's a coach of me coming out, <laughs> especially in between the tackles. You know, just put your head down, secure the ball, watch this. And I can't fault there. One spin, two spins. That's when the guy from the behind gets you. Second and one, they go to Barberin again. He's stopped in the backfield, and he will go back to the 30. That's going to be a loss of three. Whistle blows it dead. So that'll be third down and four at the 34-yard line. Another third down play. There's Aaron Ellis. Junior out of Valparaiso, transfer from St. Joe's College when they shut things down over there. St. Francis happy to have him here in Joliet. They will throw on third. Crossing route, bad throw. Looking for Brandon Ruffin. Another fourth down here at the 34-yard line. A little squeamish about calling for a field goal right yeah, now. Yeah, me too. Seems out what happened the last one. If they did, it would be... 46 yard field goal. You got to go here. Here we go again. Big game, big play. Fourth down and four. What do you got? And a timeout. Oh. They're going to take their last time out here. St. Francis taking their last time out. You know, this is the game right here, so you better be on the same page. You would think that the St. Xavier defense would come with some kind of pressure, not let him sit back yep. and read it. Yep. 2.29 remains. It was all St. Francis in the first quarter. It was all St. Xavier in the second. It was all St. Francis in the third, and we're going back and forth here in the fourth. Unbelievable game. No matter who wins, an unbelievable game. Grayson Barnett's going to warm up. Here on the near side, kicking into the net. Get that ball up, young man. <laughs> well, you have to see by the coverage scheme, who's your open man, who's your hot receiver, so to speak. All right. Presumably, here's your ball game with two and a half minutes to go. St. Xavier gets this ball back. And run, run, run. No more timeouts for St. Francis. Corners are tight. Safeties are back. Here's Ellis throwing right side. It's batted down at the line. That's a turnover on downs. 
Well, I think he was supposed to go to the opposite side of the field because he had single coverage. He goes to the top of the screen, tries to run the same play they ran to convert the last fourth down. Cougars fans making some noise on that side, and with 225, if they get a first down, it's ball game. I don't know if we'll be talking to anyone after this game if they, if they, lose, if they lose it either. They run oh, nice it. Nice play. Nick Reese is there again. They push him back. The clock's your enemy. Get up. Let yep. the referee spot the ball. All the way back to the 26. Clock ticking, 2.12 to go. If you can force them to throw the football. They're not going to throw the football. Second and 15. Yeah. No timeouts left for St. Francis. Yeah, you're right. 15 on the play clock. We'll bring it down to about 38. 138. Second down. St. Francis showing blitz. Martinez hands off to Ivalo. Inside run, no room. Get off, let him spot the ball. To the 25 yard line, third down and 13. 90 seconds remain in the game. The 18th meeting between these two teams. St. Francis has won one time. 110 remaining, and it'll 15 seconds on the play clock. This will take it down to 55 seconds when they run this next play. Snap back to Martinez. They will run to Ivlo. Shoulder down up to the 35 yard line. It'll be fourth down and four. There will be 10 seconds on the clock when they snap it. If they're smart, they punt it away, probably angle it, let it bounce a few times, waste some more time. Straight up four o'clock on 88.7 WCSF Joliet. Thanks for tuning in. St. Francis cannot stop the clock. They've run their last time out to make sure they ran the right fourth down play, but it was batted down at the line. Five on the play clock. They're just going to let it tick all the way down. Probably had a second or two take off that game clock. Oh, they too. had to reset the game clock yeah. because. Oh, now they let another second or two. Yeah, they'll probably put a maybe eight and a half or nine seconds on that clock to run the fourth down play. All that, coach. It came down to a fourth down play with a batted at the line. Now, I think if you look back, I think that they wanted to go to the opposite side of where he threw that ball. It was the same play they ran before to, to uh, secure the first down. Try to go back to it again, it was just bad down. So he reset the game clock to 11 seconds. So if you punt it, you might have five or six, one play left. Yep. You'll have, they'll have one offensive play, assuming that you get a return that doesn't take up too much time. You got to get, I mean, diagonal straight out of bounds. Get as far as you can without wasting too much of that time. Joe Bailey's been fantastic, the punter for St. Xavier. Barely gets it off. Low kick, it's going to hop. Still bouncing, you gotta pick it up. I mean, now the clock's just gonna tick all the way down. There's, don't even touch it. That's the end of the game. St. Xavier escapes a huge upset. A huge upset bid here by St. Francis. They played a heck of a game. Just couldn't quite overcome. Turnovers and penalties on both sides for St. Francis and St. Xavier. No one hurting worse than Aaron Ellis right now. 
Well, he played great in the second half, and just that one play, you couldn't see the get defender put his arms up. We don't know if the ball would have got through, if it would have been enough for the first down, but valiant effort by the Saints. And you can tell how much this loss hurts those guys, especially we saw there Arthur King, number two. He just can't even stand to stand up right now. And that's a tough one. You had a chance. You had your opportunities, especially at the end. A blocked field goal that would have given the lead. And a fourth down play with a batted pass. Just little things, little things like that. Well, that's why St. Xavier is St. Xavier. Yep. Because they've been no through the ringer, so to speak. They understand what it takes. They know how to do that. They didn't panic. They could have panicked. Hey, if they were a 500 team or they had never been here before, they could have panicked when they got down 14 nothing early in this ball game. But they stayed the course. They made the plays when they had to. That's why they're ranked number 10 in the country. St. Francis top 25 team. Uh, they're not going to be ranked, but they can play with anybody. I think we sh we've seen well, that here today. They've proven it. Yeah. Look at the schedule. You open yeah. up with number four team in the country, then you play another tough team. You play Division two team. You got no fault with the effort. There's no fault in the effort. All I want to know is just what was said at halftime because they came out with another spark and took the lead. Yeah, two touchdown drives back to back in the third quarter to give the team the lead again. But then the drive of the game, I think, for it was for St. Xavier, that long extended drive. It didn't end in a touchdown, but it ended with a field goal that gave them the lead that they owned till the end of the game. It was a 19 play, 76 yard drive, five took almost six minutes off the clock it was uh, following those two touchdown drives that was your biggest drive of the game in my opinion for st xavier and you take a look at the stats real quickly both teams ran over 75 offensive plays yeah. st x ran 78 plays st francis ran 76 st francis with 307 yards of total offense st xavier 356 yards of total offense pierre barberin 15 carries 69 yards michael johnson 12 touches for 25 aaron ellis 11 for 22 Passing wise, Ellis 15 out of 33 for 190 yards and three touchdowns. Receiver wise for St. Francis, it was Brandon Ruffin, seven catches, 133 yards, two touchdowns. Time of possession was about even, but it was just the thing is, St. Xavier, three of 17 converting on third downs. <laughs> That's pretty good defense. That's great defense. Yeah. And the thing that with St. Xavier, five times in the red zone. They scored five times, so they took advantage of their opportunities. Mm -hmm. St. Francis drops to 1-17 and 17 versus the Cougars. The, the St. Xavier Cougars have won the last nine games in a row against St. Francis. The only win for the Saints was a 24-21 win back in 2008. When you run a program like that on the south side of Chicago, you know, you, you, make, you make the one or two small plays that make the difference at the end. And that's, you know, that's the difference between being number 10 and being underrated. It's it's being able to, to kick that field goal. It's being able to make a block. It's being able to bat that one pass that you need to at the end of the game. But and uh, uh, that's 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 the difference. You know, Coach Curry and, and his team just played great. You, you're playing without Woodard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you thought that. Without defense, Peter Zach. Without yeah. Peter Zach. You did a nice job with that. But, I mean, just to come out here and give that effort and, I mean, they know each other. I mean, these yep. these guys will talk right now after they get done with their team huddle. They'll talk to the guys from St. X. Sure. They know them all. So it's just like one of these. It's Now it's a bragging rights game. So So uh, I think we probably will get an opportunity here to talk to Coach Curry because if you think about it, I mean, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top 10 team in the country. You, and you, and you could have, should have. I'll leave that up to you. But you were right there at the end. 38-28, you know, the final score, you're a – you're a blocked field goal. You're a, you're, you're a first down away. You're one stop. St. Francis made the, made the takeaways when they had the opportunity. You can't say enough about how great the defense played today. They took and the ball away when they needed to. They made the stops when they needed to. And especially playing behind the eight ball, so to speak, because, you know, the last couple of weeks, what, St. Francis has taken advantage of turnovers and takeaways yeah. and penalties, and now it kind of bit him in the butt a little bit in the first half. But they got over that hump. They came out and established, reestablished themselves in the second half and done a real nice job with that. So, I mean, yeah, the last couple of games, St. Xavier's scoring almost 40 points a game, yep. and you held them to 30. I yep. mean, the defense was right there. It just the one or two plays you need at the end of the game it just didn't come to fruition for the Saints.
Taking a look at the schedule, we'll take on Robert Morris and Trinity International. St. Francis will hope for some help from Olivet Nazarene and Robert Morris as well. Coach Curry making his way over to the sides. and uh, I mean, it's easy what, what we want to talk about. Uh, Coach, thanks for taking some time for us. I know it's a tough one out there, but the bright side is that defense played as good as we've seen them today, holding a real good St. Xavier offense to 30 points. They got those takeaways you keep yeah. you keep preaching about, so you kind of hang your head on the defense today. Well, I thought, you know, I just told our team, I mean, that was a great college football game yeah. out there. And, you know, it sucks that we come out on the losing end of those things. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, hopefully our guys learn something from it and uh, not only benefits us for the rest of this season, but moving on here in the future because, you know, I – it doesn't matter to me that we lost to St. Xavier, just, you mm -hmm. know, the way that we lost. And, and you know, I mean, our sidelines were going. Everybody was into the game, and, and it was just, you know, kind of heartbreaking there at the end, you know. But yep. those, are the, those are the way things work sometimes. And I'll tell you that from the, from the sidelines up here to the press box, uh, you had everyone's attention at that, that entire game. It was one of the more exciting ones that we've seen since I've been around here. What happened in that halftime locker room? Because I know you guys came out on fire offensively, two touchdowns right in a row. That, that had to be a pretty fired-up locker room. Well, yeah, I mean, but but the big thing that they, they just believed in themselves. Um, you know, there, uh, to be honest with you, there was no adjustment made offensively or defensively at halftime. It was, you know, I mean, we got to go out and execute, you know, and we weren't doing that in the first half, particularly our running game wasn't going. And, you know, we, we made made some good runs there in the second half, and yep. that opens it up for Aaron and our receivers to be able to go get some things. And, you know, I think that was the big change, um, just execution. And, and defensively, we just... We just kept our same game plan in the first half, kept trying to get turnovers and kept trying to hold them out of the end zone. I thought our defense did a good job of holding the two field goals, you know, maybe yeah. two or three. Um, you know, that's that's always our goal. We don't let them in the end zone. We want them to kick field goals. And, you know, I thought we did that today. Like I said, it's just unfortunate that we came out on the, the wrong end of that one today. Yeah, for sure. Like you like you always say, it's turnovers and, and some penalties, some pretty killer penalties on both sides actually yeah. today. So. You know, little things like that. You went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top 10 team in the country, and that's nothing to hang your head about. So great game, Coach. It was a fun one. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Head Coach Joe Curry down there. Unfortunately, they come out on the uh, losing end of this one, 30-28. to 28. Your final score here today. St. Francis drops to 3-5. and five. St. Xavier, the number 10 team in the country, now 7-1. Seven 7-1. and one. Seven and one. Now they are 8-1 and one for the first time since uh, 2012, the year after they won the national title. Next game is next week. It'll be on the radio at Robert Morris up in Arlington Heights at 3 o'clock. You can listen on your radio or you can listen online at GoFightingSaints.com. Thanks a lot to Brendan and Jessica and the rest of the TV crew going to be here. They were here early. They're going to be here late tearing down in the cold. So thank you very much for all the hard work that you guys do for us here as well. Again, your final one more time, 30 to 28 for Coach Lee Turnbull. My name's Nick Jacobs. Have a great and safe Halloween weekend, everybody.